Yeah, in inverted time, you'd actually suck poop back up inside you. And- <laughs> I'm like, no, sucking poop should never be said. <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by Cinema Sins. <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Sins, a weekly look at everything going on inside the world of Cinema Sins. I'm Aaron Dicer, and I'm joined as always by Jonathan Watkins. Hello, hello. And Danae Hughes. Um, we write for Cinema Sins and TV Sins <laughs> and do, do, do uh, various other that's things. That's what it should have been. Should have been <laughs> inside the Cinema Sins universe as well. <laughs> Aaron, you just keep going. Yeah, no, it. listen, I'm only going to give you so much time. I'm only going to give you so much time. <laughs> I'm uh, like, uh. <laughs> and this week we have our special guest, Alk. Alk. Alk is joining so us. So much drinking going on. Oh uh, so God. much drinking, referencing yeah. the outtakes. Uh, yeah. Guys, it is a crazy time in our world. Uh, and it is crazy time in our individual universes as well. We're all dealing with, like, I mean, I want to say unseasonable weather, but it's not really unseasonable. It's just kind no. of maxed out a little bit. Yeah, and, this is and like, we're yeah. fine. Like, where we, we are, we're fine. We get we get snow, you know, once or twice a year here where right, I'm at, yeah. but we don't get it like this. And, right. uh, so yeah, it's, we, but it's, but it's kind of cool. It's, you know, it's nice to see and I don't have to get out. So there you go. <laughs> there are definitely, there are definitely parts of our nation right now that are in dire, dire straits. And oh that is gosh. not us. We're doing yes. okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I've been checking in with some of the CinemaSins fan base that I yeah. talk to more regularly yeah. just to kind of make sure that they're okay. Um, like Mr. Collect it, mm-hmm. Dexter, they're both in Texas. I know right. there's more as well. So yeah, I have fam- I have family in um, San Antonio, and they're 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 doing fine. Uh, they've they've had they've been doing like rolling blackouts, but they're we've had yes. a little so bit of that here. here. Okay. Um, yeah, we had that happen in Springfield as well. Yep. In fact, uh, one of the places that Iris goes, she goes to Nana's house, and she contacted me one of the days and said we don't have power this morning, and it, it's because we were like at a level three state of emergency, which is when they do the the rolling blackouts just yeah. to make sure mm-hmm. that everybody and we were getting notifications to conserve power and conserve water and not to use gas if we didn't have to just to kind of make sure that those who need it have it so it was a very strange few days we we had the coldest temperatures that this area has had i did they, was it 30 years it's been 30 years since it was that cold mm-hmm. that many consistent days yeah. in a row yeah and then this is the most snow we've accumulated where where we are specifically i think in seven years we have mm-hmm. the, more snow than we've had i in was about thinking seven. it was about seven years ago that we had a decent sized snow like this it has been at least i'm gonna say four years since we've had any kind of accumulation yeah. we have had winters the last three winters with it'll dust you know, like mm-hmm. two or three times and then, you know, completely melt the next day. This is the first yeah. time we've really had accumulation in at least five years. And we haven't <laughs> had it this much in, you know, the last seven. I laugh because my husband, it's been long enough that I think he forgot what snow accumulation looks like. We were, dri- <laughs> <laughs> we were driving down the road the other uh, the other day together. We have a Jeep. So we got the, the Rubicon out. We're, we're happy as can be. And there was this section where they had kind of been pushing snow mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. off of yeah. the road. Yeah, yeah. Narnia. And it was m- maybe four feet deep. And he's like, look at how much snow is in that <laughs> pile. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you should tell him to live at the uh <laughs> live at the end of a cul de sac and go to Narnia with that stuff, man. That's uh that's that's what you gotta do with those big snow piles. Oh my gosh. I I was trying to remind him of times when we've had like so so much snow. Like it's like mm-hmm. there's been ten feet. There's been times when we were able to like pull something over and there would just be like this massive twenty foot piles where they like, pack all the snow over mm-hmm. when they're kind of shoveling all the snow and he he's just it's gone from his brain. This is the most snow I think he thinks he's ever seen. It goes fast. Yeah, it, yeah. it definitely. You forget that stuff pretty fast. Um, I felt really bad for the animals, though. Mm-hmm. Like This is the first time my puppies have seen snow like this. And they came up onto the porch after it had snowed, it had accumulated, and it was uh, negative temperatures. And they were trying to run on two legs to keep one of their paws up out of the snow. It was it was kind of tragic and I felt bad for the cows and all the animals. And then I was like, Oh my God, there's homeless people. And I just kind of fell apart. Yeah. Had a little, yeah. It was, it's a lot when you I, think about I it. I walked mm-hmm. out, uh, one morning very lucky. to, uh, yeah. to my son looking, staring out the window and he, he said, dad, 
that rabbit hasn't moved in an hour and a half. And he was so worried. And it was actually, there were two rabbits and it's obviously have a nest somewhere near there. Yeah. And they were just kind of huddled up against the, you know, the shed or whatever. And I said, I told him, I said, they're built for this in many ways. You know, they can slow themselves down. They, you know, they've got all that fur, like, you know, it's colder than they're used to for sure. And sure enough, you know, they, they were able to go on their way in a while, but they were just, they were hunkered down and just like slowing everything down. Cause yeah, it's, it's, it got nasty out there. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's for the, sure. It's the seasons, and it's interesting to see them again, especially like you said, we haven't in this area seen yeah. snow accumulation and cold like this in a long, long time. But we hope you guys are all safe out there. I know not everybody listening is in snow. It's just that's kind of the big topic of conversation for the uh, adults. Now we're going to talk to you about Preparation H. Um, <laughs> well, I did and- feel like, I feel like, you know, we've talked about this before. We're like, we hope this is like, this is the the warmth of laughter, right? Like this is the warmth of fun. And, and we, you know, we provide something like this. We keep doing something like this because we keep hearing that, you know, this you guys, is. You guys like us. That, yes, that that is something that. Uh, you like that our you, banter. Yeah, that you enjoy during even during these times so so now we're going to talk about raising children and (laughs) are we i'm just going to go go through all the serious topics today all of them i mean it wouldn't be an episode of bts without uh philosophical (laughs) conversation on some serious topic or another but no aaron won't let us uh yeah it's correct it's me that hates talking about deep philosophical things that is that is me that is definitely me really looking forward to the tenant discussion (laughs) oh god well let's get towards it shall we let's let's go into the sin side scoop what's he Building in there. Secret, I've got a secret. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. This is a true story. We're going to take a look at the videos from the week, the process of sending them, how we felt about the stuff we are sinning, kicking it off with commercial sins, uh, the recent <laughs> Folgers Mongoose what Zoom. What the fuck <laughs> is this? What is it? I, it's okay, like, okay. I don't why? know either. Here's the why? backstory. Here's the backstory. Uh, there was a viral video that came out a few weeks ago of a ju- a, a judge Zoom call for like some kind of a court system. Yeah, I saw that one. Okay. I'm not a cat. And yeah, and on this call, one of the lawyers who is obviously supposed to have his normal camera set up accidentally had a cat filter and it became a huge meme because the judge is like, hey, you've got a cat filter on. And the lawyer says something along the lines of, Yes, we're trying to figure out how to turn it off, but we can go ahead and proceed because I'm not a cat. (laughs) And the judge is like, I know that. (laughs) But it's extra funny because of the cat filter obviously is talking while the lawyer is talking. And then at one point in time has these really big wide eyes and it's just, it's hilarious. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, it's really funny. It's really funny. That spurred of this idea for the Folgers commercial, which was tweeted at Commercial Sins on Twitter. And when I saw that, I shared it over to the team and man, we just are like, let's jump on it now. So I don't know if this is just a social media Folgers commercial, if this was made just for social media and for fun, or if this is actually like airing on, I don't know, on television or network channels, I'm not sure. But it was so hilarious. Like, I love the script that Barrett wrote. Oh and my what God. a talk fun, about, hilarious turnaround. Talk about jumping on it, though. Yeah, Danae shared it. And like, maybe 15, 20 minutes later, Barrett's like, I'm on it. Like, what? Oh, You're on let what? Let me shit gold real quick. <laughs> it's like a Saturday afternoon <laughs> yeah. at like two. Yeah. yeah, I think it was even the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, um, Barrett did have some things to say about it. Uh while I'm pulling that up, I do want to say thanks to all of you who share what you want us to try to take a swing at, yeah. especially with the commercial sins. We do keep track of that stuff. And in this case, it was just hilarious to have someone tweet at us and then <laughs> be directed to it. That was literally created the situation. So Barrett said the Folgers video was one of the most fun ones I've done in a while. At first, I thought it was too vapid. No, vapid. Vapid? Vapid's Vupid. right. I think it's vapid. Verpid. <laughs> Verpid. I think you got it right. Yeah, Verpid. V- vlap, v- flaccid? Nope. Uh, to do anything with it. But then some sins started flowing out of me. They did a great job on that edit, too, since there was only 15 seconds of material with which to work. <laughs> also, that mongoose can go to hell. 
Very creepy. Speaking of hell, I felt like that's where I was watching the. Wait, oh, that's something else, that's, Aaron. Oh, yep, oh. yep. That's sorry. Gotta wait. Spirit stream of consciousness. You gotta wait. You gotta wait. <laughs> gotta wait. <laughs> uh, I guess we could talk about Folgers first. Uh, I am obviously not the person to talk about this. Uh, I do not drink coffee. Um, even when I lost my taste, I did not drink coffee. Uh, so. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, I thought about it, but I'm like, what's the point? I don't drink coffee either. I guess to feel your heart rate go up but then with someone who has a heart condition perhaps not the best idea yeah. I, don't I, I don't drink it just before i never it's it just does i it doesn't it does weird things to my system that i don't enjoy yeah. so i just yeah. kind of gave up on it i like the taste of it but. so danae do you have a uh, do you drink a lot of coffee you're mostly tea right i usually have one cup of coffee uh in the mornings but not consistently not every morning um, do you have a brand that you like prefer the taste of or i i have a local coffee shop that i buy beans that's kind of the thing now right like everybody's kind of got their their local you know cafe my uh my wife drinks multiple cups a day and uh my father-in-law and my mother-in-law are big coffee drinkers too and they're staying with us currently um and um so our house smells like coffee yeah. a lot right yeah when my parents yeah. when my parents are here they definitely drink coffee yeah yeah, yeah. and it's uh like it's yeah. being brewed constantly yeah yeah i nice smell I, though i never um drink more than i, I have one of the co- those coffee coffee presses that you mm-hmm. just have on your table um and i think it just for me comes out to about two cups of coffee so but i don't have a coffee maker or anything like that i just I'm wonder just i wonder if for like a, a legacy coffee company like folgers like it's a really tough time you know like with the with like the booming of starbucks and then like the idea of you know all the local coffee shops like mm-hmm. I, I just i just wonder for somebody you know I, I wonder how folgers is doing i mean i'm not worried it's not like man well, i'm concerned I mean, I think for the, folgers the is it curing? <laughs> is that how you say it Right, yeah. you've got that um, too, yeah. Well, I'm saying, but I assume Folgers has K pods. That oh, sure. Well, like yeah. they've moved into like the K pod kind yeah, of thing. I, yeah. So yeah. I mean, I I think that you definitely have a lot of, and and we have that, and that definitely does make it easier because you just you know yeah. it's just making one cup as opposed to making right. a pot, you know. So yeah, I think that there are certain brands that are really great for companies who make massive quantities of coffee throughout the day for their staff and also people visiting because it's an inexpensive brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do wonder too how many I bet the, I bet a lot of that goes to like cafeterias. Yeah, and... that's kind of my thinking, but oh, but yeah, you're right point. because times have changed and as far as for homes having coffee makers at home, it used to be very few mm-hmm massive brands that you could go and get now there's a lot of options so there are a I mean, ton of options if you go look at the k-pod section it's it's insane speaking of like starbucks dunkin donuts you know just yeah everybody everybody's got and, and a coffee brand and there's tea and uh you know like hot chocolate stuff like that too so. folgers folgers has one of the most memorable ads of all time like their best part best of waking up is waking you know up. that's just classic marketing yeah, genius yep. you know so like they've you know they've got some brain space for sure um well we want to go into the sins video then i don't know there's Let's much to it. say about the actual commercial just really weird nightmare uh, fuel <laughs> yeah definitely nightmare fuel and uh, uh but man barrett hit the perfect notes on this one yeah, can yeah, i tell I you the couple that i love yeah, please. the most um the perma smile it was one of the things that genuinely freaked me out about this is because of this like mongoose filter situation the only human features that I can relate to are the eyes and and the mouth, uh, these teeth. And so, number one, what great teeth of this actress, <laughs> uh-huh. this, of this actor, this person. But then to never, like, what a psycho face. So I loved his sin kind of going into that. Mm-hmm. And then I also loved the sin about this person who has a coffee addiction, who has a coffee pot, pouring the coffee has coffees, cups in the background, a Keurig, and artwork, all coffee. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I just, I really enjoyed just being able to point all that out. <laughs> yeah, I definitely had that one too. Uh, Jonathan, uh, what other ones did you pull out well, of here? J- Yeah, I mean, it was just the, the whole thing about like just pouring the coffee, you know, like at one point even questions like, did this person get fired because they were <laughs> pouring coffee? <laughs> uh, on the thing and right, also yeah. like frederick frederick just got his face replaced with a Fol- folgers logo was was funny to me for some reason <laughs> well what was funny about it was that was that was the other one that folgers. i had too. 
Yeah, was uh, the lady's obsession with coffee has now achieved singularity <laughs> and can now take over machines. <laughs> like, just that explanation for why all of a sudden he got replaced with a Folgers logo. I just, th- yeah, that was really, really smart. I was like, who so. the fucking fuck even pours coffee like this? That was also yeah. funny because you had yeah. it's like so yeah. high up. and Ah, uh, yes, commercial. I love that we're insta-sending <sighs> commercials. That's really fun. And yeah, keep sending those Keep sending those our way. Those Those are really fun. Speaking of Insta Sinning, let's go into <gasps> TV Sins. We're going to talk a little more about WandaVision Insta Sin, two WandaVision um, episodes from this past week. And in fact, I believe we're going to hit three in a row again. Uh, we cranked yeah, we out the latest one. So uh, pop, that pop, should pop them out. That should be actually, <laughs> by the time you hear this, yeah, that'll already be by out for sure. By the time you hear this, there will be another version. Yeah, you can go watch it right now um, at, at www. <laughs> Okay, so we've got We Interrupt This Program and on a very special episode. Uh, and so those are episodes, if I'm correct, four and five. Yes, yes. Uh, and four mm-hmm. was the first, like, okay, here's what's going on, like, you yes. know, reveal. You know, four was the first big reveal of... Yeah, of, of Monica, M- Monica after Rambo the blip. and after yes. the blip and all that stuff. Yep. And the only episode so far... Without a sitcom theme, right? Right. Because this one essentially just rewinds over what we've seen the past three episodes Mm -hmm. and shows what's been happening on the outside of what we will come to call the hex. So the uh, we are now through, as we're recording this, this morning, episode seven dropped. Um, And again, please patience for how confusing it is for us to be talking about episodes four and five when episode six is already on the channel and episode seven we've already seen. But I I bring it up to say that of the first seven, four is the only non-sitcom one. I imagine eight and nine are both going to be non-sitcom as well. Like I imagine we'll finish off with a couple Mm -hmm. just like plot episodes that that get us through the finale and and that kind of stuff. Setting up for whatever's coming next that can be solved either in another show or another movie of Mm -hmm. some kind. Yeah. Yeah. This this one, um, I've actually had to start going to Wikipedia just to remind myself what is contained inside of one episode. Right. Also, in this episode, we got that little flashback to the beekeeper situation to kind of have a better understanding of, oh, when you go through into Mm -hmm. Wanda's world, your clothing is changed. That whole reveal Mm -hmm. happens. Um, And so it turns the hazmat suit into a beekeeper suit. It turns his tether into a jump rope. This is a a good point to to jump in and also say, though, that uh, we are starting to get to the place where our sins episodes are either aging well or not aging well, depending on the things we're saying. It's true. And it's, it's, it, this is really interesting for us. We've never experienced something so plot twist heavy yeah. having to, because usually we know the outcome and we can kind of wink at it and be like, uh, good right. thing that'll never happen or whatever. But there's but some stuff here that's aging well. well. Yeah, there's, I think we're doing well. Because, because I, you mentioned that beekeeper thing, and there's a sin I think about, well, but how is he rewound? Like, she rewinds in that moment. What happens to him? That has never been answered. They've they've never, like, where is the beekeeper? What happened when the rewind happened? Yeah, like, like it's, I think the sin, I think that you wrote was something like, and I'm betting we don't ever have this solved. Mm-hmm. And to date, that's still, that's still true. Remains to be true. Yeah. So we'll see kind of what happens there. Also, this one ends with Wanda pushing Monica out of town after Monica does the big reveal that Mm -hmm. Ultron killed her brother. So this is when the first time we see someone break into the Wanda of now rather than this TV show. Mm -hmm. And I think this is sort of, for me, was a kind of a relieving moment because as much fun as I'm having with seeing these characters, again, I'm loving the performances and stuff. Like, and, and the curiosity of what's happening. And now we have like kids coming into play and all this. As much as I'm enjoying that, I'm also like, okay, where are we going? And so when when Monica, the kids are born, you know, and then Monica, it's like Ultron killed your brother and Wanda sort of snaps into the reality. I was like, yes, this is going to get exciting. Um, and it's also fun, too, because seeing how Monica is thrown out and then going back in time to when we send it, that Monica survives this, it just solidified that sin even right. more because right. although it's kind of stated later, I believe something like that, Mo- that Wanda essentially protected her as she mm-hmm. was throwing her out because she doesn't want her to die. 
it still is a fun, I, I think it's a perfectly fun sin because yeah. we are trying to be aware that we genuinely don't know what's going to happen just like you guys. <clears throat> so, but that was a fun one. Um, you guys wrote on this one, right? And I was the shadow. Mm -hmm. Is that Correct. right? I haven't said it yet, but this was, uh, we interrupt this program was a Dicer Watkins script. Uh, Danae, you did shadow on this. Um, so yeah, Jonathan and I wrote on this one. Um, yeah, we could talk about WandaVision a lot forever. Let's talk about the the Sins video and mm -hmm. uh, for this episode since we've kind of laid the groundwork. And uh, yeah, Danae, you get to start on that. Yep. Um, I like the uh, the O standing for observation in SWARD. <laughs> uh, we will continue to play with that as, as is shown, I believe, in the next one that we're going to talk about. <laughs> it is. <laughs> But it's funny to hear you go sward. Well, and, and again, and the key is just to make it just like that's how it's pronounced. Like, you know, to just, you mm -hmm. know, just drop it in. And people do seem to be enjoying that of the comments of the next one where it's like, love the fact that you're continuing on with that kind of thing. Uh, calling uh, send the, the guy at the reception desk when Monica returns back for after being blipped out, calling him an apple eater mm -hmm. was fun. And actually there was a comment made um, recently, I think think on YouTube BTS channel, uh, apologies for the person who wrote it. I don't have it up in front of me who said appreciating, um, that we are calling out the apple eaters and kind of changing the tone a little bit of, uh, of the sins language. And mm -hmm. it really becomes an inside joke, uh, that if you're a fan of the channels, you'd understand it, but someone's like apple eater. What's that? Like mm -hmm. anyone who knows us knows we're right. saying that they're an asshole, but yeah. Um, the K-pod conversation was fun. I thought Jonathan would like to talk about that. <laughs> what? Oh, what about uh, it? We were in the in the combine uh, process. We're talking about like K-pods. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. You said it's so funny because we were just talking person. about K-pods. Yeah, yeah. No, my, yeah, no. My wife's a, like I said earlier. We were talking about this. My wife's a coffee drinker. So yes, we have yep. not one but two Keurigs. Uh, the reason we have two though is because uh, somebody got us a new one. Uh, we only use one, I think. I don't know. But I love I love that you're that you're able to be like they're recyclable. Calm down. <laughs> I like, did, well, I didn't know that though. That was uh research. So Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I was just curious if they weren't recyclable recyclable. And uh so I looked it up and they actually are. So that so then yeah, that was where the context of the sin came from. I'm probably gonna steal all of your guys' on this no, one. That's great. The, Please the do. other two that I really loved, uh, I mean, I, I liked so many of them, but the other two that I pulled out was the whiteboard sin because it's so accurate for what we're trying to do here. The the sin is a uh, whiteboard from the sins writing room, desperately trying to figure out how to sin a mystery in real time that is somehow transported yeah. into the show because it is like that. We <laughs> we're over here like, okay, how do we go about this one? And it feels very true. Um, and it was a good visual to go along with that. Uh, but my favorite one is the final one where mm -hmm. um, Aaron gets to kind of uh, embody Danae a little bit, uh -huh. I think. Yeah. And and the other fans who I am connecting with deeply about wanting Vision to be alive. And so mm -hmm. kind of a wink and a nod to that whole thing I thought was just well done. Really well done. Yeah. Yeah. I think there but was a comment. Dead, right? I think there was a comment uh, in, in the comments of this video, somebody saying... Um, I really enjoyed that last sin. Hi, Danae. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah. I noticed. I noticed there were a lot of comments too about like you know they explained the blip that you know Hulk snapped his fingers and saved I have everybody. That. Yeah, I have that but for the from one of my comment sections uh, what to talk the, about a little bit. Okay, well then we'll mm -hmm. talk about it then. I because I couldn't remember what sin that was and I didn't have a second well, to go back and look. I, I just was looking I for have, comments. I have other comment section so we can talk about it and i have one other comment section so we can talk about it now but Come yes on. many people saying look guys the incredible hulk when he did his snap said safely and he's smart enough to make sure everybody's safely and I cannot wait for them to show the blip again so I can come back at that because <laughs> that is such a like, well, that was easy button yeah, like and expl it, explanation. And it does not cover like, oh, sure, fine. He said safely. Yeah. So tell me how that works. You tell me how everybody is not only physically safely, uh, safely returned, but also mentally, emotionally, psychologically with the things that have happened in five years. Yeah. What does safely mean to you? And tell me again that this was a good idea. Like, well, I am and, so anti 
return blip right now. Like I just, yeah, I've really like just been like that is a horrible thing that they did. I want everybody to be dead. They should be. They like that is the, the better Ultron, message. Calm down. <laughs> and I, I agree with you. And I, I and Dave, name? these people have never seen a Wishmaster Thanos. movie because you got to be very Thanos. specific with the genies. No, you got to be right. very specific right. with the genies, or they'll. They'll do something bad. So true. So true. Because the Wishmaster movies are based on true stories. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. The gens are real. Uh, Let's see. I also wanted to mention. um, We already talked about the. You know, we're just talking about like this. You know, great job, Avengers. uh, Talking about how the blip is actually a horrible idea. Are returning people. Um, but uh, then I also wanted to mention scene only contains one broke girl because uh, that made me laugh quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, that well. was one. I think we we rewrote that one a little bit. I had something similar and then you were like, how about this? I was like, perfect. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, John- we got the return of Darcy and uh, is it Jimmy Wu? What, mm-hmm. What's his Correct. Name? Yeah. yeah. And um, got a little flack for that too with uh, like, of course we remember them. And I'm like, I mean, I don't think everybody remembers them though. Cause somebody, well, somebody but- commented like everybody watching WandaVision would know who they are. I'm like, I don't know. Like my wife's watching WandaVision. She didn't remember who they were, you know? It's it's mm-hmm. definitely another welcome to the channel moment, right? Because yeah. what bothers people is we have one sin that's like, oh look, he did the magic trick that Ant Man taught him. Like we were like we are a yeah, nerd yeah, fan yeah. and remember yeah, yeah. everything. That's and then so like funny. a couple sins later, it's like, who even are these people? <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. it's so great. <laughs> But, uh, uh, yeah, I think people forget that part of our job <laughs> is to troll folks. It's just that way. Well, well I'm and, glad. And part of the narrator, the narrator is a little bit multiple personality too, yeah. where it is both the making fun of fan culture and also yeah. being part of fan culture. Like both those things are part of the narrator's, you know, personality. So, I'm, yeah. I'm, and I'm glad they found a way to work them in because, I mean, I think. Darcy's a little underserved as a character in the in the couple of you know Thor movies mm-hmm. that she's in, and um, so she gets to shine a little more here. And you know, Kat Dennings has a pretty avid fan base, so that's good. Yeah. And then the Jimmy Wicker, he was one of the best things about Ant Man and the Wasp. So mm-hmm. it's nice to see him in a in a in a bigger light. So yeah, no, I enjoyed that. My, you guys uh... have mentioned just about everything. I will say, release the dick cut. Uh, was... <laughs> I'm so glad we kept that one. Mm-hmm. We did we kind of go to back and forth. Because... I wish so... Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. No, I was just saying it was it was one we almost cut because that scene is the clothing and hairstyles are definitely episode two. But I but I went through episode two and that scene is not in yeah, episode two. Yeah. So the sin stands. That is from some episode we haven't seen. Uh, or part yeah. of an episode we haven't seen. So I, I think, think the I sin might, stands. I, think but. I wish I had thought we should have considered uh, release the wick, witch dick cut. Uh, that could have been... <laughs> Uh, that could have been true. fun. You get the bewitched and and the Dick Van Dyke um, in there. And then I just want to... Dick the, cut. I love the Lost Out take. I just... It just and that just reminds me of how good Lost was. Despite all of Lost's flaws, they could do a cliffhanger better than probably any show ever. Oh man, uh, they had several. I mean, One not of the greatest- Pen- not Penny's boat, you know, and yeah, no, you're you're absolutely yeah. right. But that we've got to go back is yeah. top five. <laughs> yeah. TV show yeah. reveal of all time. Yeah. Like it is like the Which that one? reveal is mind blowing. Because the-, the loss, because you find out that. That it's this been a flash is, forward, not yeah, a flash you, back. You assumed it was a flash back, and then you find out at the end it's been a flash forward, and you know. Because he says, Jack. We've got to go back, Kate. We've got to go back. And at that point, you didn't realize we were looking at the future. Like he yeah. knows about the island. Like it was mind blowing. Um, yeah, when that happened. So cool. Here, here's the problem with binging that show. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. Oh no, you're not wrong. Talk about a painstakingly wait, though, man. My God, I, Lost is show. where I completely fell in love with the week to week mystery reveal yeah. pattern. I'm and I'm loving it here in Wandavision as well. I, I think yeah. TV can be really good at now. You stew in it for a week, talk about it, talk amongst yourselves, have discussions. I love that, and I'm I, so glad Disney well, Plus is I, doing that. I don't that. mean to keep talking about Lost, but yeah, I just remember that first season where it was like the fifth or sixth episode, and you weren't really sure where everything was going and then all of a sudden you find out like ethan wasn't on the plane and you're just right yeah what is this show (laughs) and then it was just from there on out like you know oh yeah that was that was couldn't miss 
that was a seismic show. It changed a lot about television. I, it, I'm, absolutely. I'm really impressed. Uh, WandaVision. <laughs> let's move back to WandaVision, shall we? <laughs> on a very special episode. Uh, this was a Dicer Hughes script. Uh, Danae and I writing on this one. And this one goes back into the uh, TV show format. And boy, did we have a debate about what show. Two, uh, two of you did. I don't care. <laughs> like, Nobody yeah, really let's, cares. Let, let's do just a real super quick recap of what this one is for those that are interested. Sure. This is the one where the kids age themselves up um, and then the dog uh dies in this one they get a dog and the dog dies and there's just kind of like this tension about that That's still and Wanda, a weird weird plot line i don't know why. i don't think so i, I don't think so I, but i have theories oh, okay. about so why you think that's yeah. going to come back okay I, well, well i think they're I, trying to get Wanda to do something they're... i i think okay. that and i we talked about this when we were theorizing when the show came out so i'm just gonna i'm, I'm not gonna go into the future knowledge i'm gonna stay in what we talked about like when we connected um about that I, I at this point in time when this show came out i was like i think that there are people trying to figure out how wanda can bring vision back to life mm -hmm. and so they bring in pietro hoping that she'll potentially be interested in maybe bringing pietro back to life and then they have this dog that they that they that mm -hmm. is killed somehow um and with the intention of like Will you bring the dog back to life for your children? Like they're trying to manipulate Wanda okay. to use her abilities to bring life to something so that uh, I think it's for vision. Um, but I know that there's probably multiple people interested in vision becoming a weapon again. Um, anyway, that's my theory at that point when this, the show came out. So that's happening. Um, and the, you know, I think, I think this is also the first time that we're seeing, uh, Oh, this is the first time we see vision really break apart from Wanda in a very intense way. Like he's been kind of curious, but now he's showing emotion and anger and confusion about who he is. And so there's just this really, Oh, we're moving away from happy family moment. And we're going mm -hmm. into the, the seriousness of what's actually happening in the yeah. storyline as the also, vision's trying to figure out what's going on. They're also sharing the laughter of love. I didn't know if you knew. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this is the episode that ends with the Pietro reveal. Yes. Uh, yes. Which is the Pietro from the X-Men universe already in existence uh, that Fox, Fox did. Yeah, the Fox. The previously, the Fox X-Men yeah, universe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that blew people's minds, including my own. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that's It's still that's not sure what that is. means in the grand scheme of things. So. I don't... I'm, I said then, and I still yeah. continue to believe... I, I don't think it means as much as some would want it to mean. I think, you know, we're, we're dealing with... But I could be wrong. I mean, it, it uh, could I absolutely because I mean, be something. you know, I mean, I, I mean, would I hate? I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, it would be nice to s if they decided to bring back. Um, God, who played Magneto? Um, bring in the back old my version no, or no, the no, new no, version? This version, the current version. Michael it's, Fassbender. My, I mean, I mean, if you're saying Michael Fassbender is coming into this universe, I'm good with that. You know, yeah. And uh, so, I mean, there's some of the actors maybe I wouldn't be as excited about, but overall. Uh, I would be interested. Okay, if that's... Uh, Jonathan, which would which would you like to see more, Ian McKellen or Michael Fassbender? Oh, that's tough. Right? I mean, I mean, do, do, I mean, you do, know, do, 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 I think Ian McKellen. I, I like. I think that that would be. Yeah. I mean, I I think Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart definitely I find a more interesting pair because I right. honestly, as much as I God, who's I can't think of anybody's name. Who's playing <laughs> Professor X? <laughs> Uh, that's J uh, J uh, uh, McAvoy, right? Yeah, McAvoy, who I who I really really enjoy overall, but for mm -hmm. some reason, as I've never really found him that interesting in that role, so I definitely prefer like Stewart and K McKellen going back and forth. Well, just um, the fact just the fact that this episode right. plants those questions is really fun. Yeah, like it's just it's really fun to think about those things, and of course, it's just kind of one of those mind blowing moments. Um, I'm trying to find in my search history or in my watch history on YouTube. Uh, I have too many Google accounts, though, so I don't know which of my Google <laughs> accounts I watched it on. Um, but I was trying to find because I watched this really great um, uh, theories on Pietro that was on uh, of very smart people who mm -hmm. know Marvel Universe and know all of the different superhero things talking about theories on what they're trying to do with 
bringing in this version of Pietro and, you know, obviously it's not answered uh, at this point in time. Mm -hmm. This is just when the big question comes up and all of the fans, you know, get to freak out. Um, and, but there are some really good videos on YouTube that I was able to kind of like look through and, cool. um, so yeah. I'm going to see if I can find that, but I don't know if I'll find it quickly. Well, and I think we feel like even after this morning's episode, we know more, but we're not going to talk about that because we don't want to spoil ahead, but I would still say there's plenty unknown about this character, uh, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think there's more to be revealed. But even if it's like, even if the storyline itself isn't saying, uh, is isn't is saying one thing instead of saying another thing, the fact that they're bringing in the face of Pietro like this, mm -hmm. you know, that they're that they're not bringing in the other actor mm -hmm. uh, to to do like a wink and a nod, they're bringing in this one for whatever they're doing. I uh, that's a choice to at least acknowledge alternate timelines. Yeah. Um whether they're going to be activated or reinstated or, or merged, I think is something that at least Marvel is saying that they're willing to contemplate Yeah. Uh, by doing this yeah. at the very, very least. Well, it's really only the X-Men you could do that with though. I mean, they're, I mean, mm -hmm. they're not, I mean, I don't think they're going to, I mean, well, I think they'll, well, they'll recast Fantastic Four. Well, and, considering Chris Evans was in the first Fantastic Four, that would be very yeah, difficult. Yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting though. <laughs> oh my god, yes! If they you were know, trying they to do some multiverse that. thing, they kind of did that in the Arrowverse, right? Because Brandon yeah. Ro uh, Routh yes. is in the Arrowverse as yes. a different character than Superman, and then when they did all the like the multiverse stuff, he met his Superman. Yeah. version of himself uh, yeah. as this other character. So it, there is precedent for that kind of craziness and wackiness. A absolutely. absolutely. Uh, I found it. Um, Eric Voss uh, on Twitter is EA Voss. I'm not 100% sure like about him and his content. So this is me just kind of throwing out one of the videos I watched. I watched his video from February 9th. It's got just over a million views from uh, the channel New Rockstars. And it's WandaVision, X-Men, Quicksilver, Evan Peters, Crossover, Explained. Ah. Um, and it goes through just different theories, though. It's not just like, it's here's what they could be doing, or they could be doing this, or mm -hmm. possibly this. So I don't know. This was a really fun one to kind of look back into. And also his shirt is rad, because it's like a yeah. this really rad vision sh shirt. So this, at the very it, least, go look at his shirt. It's this great. means we could get Nicolas Cage back as Ghost Rider, though. I'm down. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. Good point. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan, uh, you wrote on this one. No, you did not write on this one. No, so why don't you I kick didn't. us off? Why don't you kick uh, us well, off on your I'm sins? I'm curious about sporgasming. What that all? <laughs> what that entails? That's, that's, okay. that's a running gag, that... right? Because we did yep. uh, we did the spoiler logo yeah. combination, so splogo. So going, and then we added the orgasming. Yeah. I feel like uh, that'd be a lot to clean up. It's um, true. Sibling favoritism, I thought was funny. Mm -hmm. uh, breaking character, you're better than that, Catherine. I can't believe they left that in. Oh my god, I didn't read the comments on this, but I was really curious if people were like, "She wasn't breaking character." Oh, it was intentional, uh, man. <laughs> just imagine being this guy in the background was really fun. I loved that one. Yeah, uh, someone's patting their serial killer board, and uh, even the laser sights are a bit male gazy. Was probably my favorite. So. Yeah, yeah. I did. I did. I did. Double check to make sure I knew the location of the heart and that it was, you know, <laughs> and the location of Elizabeth. And the location, breasts. yes, of the cleavage. <laughs> I did a comparison, and I still. Is I feel, that your keeping tabs? I feel conf. Yes, that's my keeping tabs. Uh, I feel confident <laughs> that those lasers should have been, you know, more to one side oh, than the other. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, today, why don't you go next? Um, I, I, I really wanted to just point out Aaron and I's back and forth argument about the, the fucking stairs in this episode. Yeah. The full house debate. I had that in keeping tabs, but I've got other stuff there too. Okay. So no, we can, well, we, we can, can talk about it. it. No, that. let's No, I've got other stuff there. So I, this out. I think they are doing an amalgam though of just, oh, of course the 80s sitcom, but the, the opening credits were uh, I mean, the song was very similar to to Family Ties. Oh yeah. well, the painting is directly the painting, yeah, Family Ties. Yeah, yeah. the windows mm -hmm. and the literal carpet on the stairs is the same carpet. Sure is. Yeah. So I was very confused why Aaron was adamant that the stairs yeah, think, oh, specifically. Listen, let's, the majority so of this is Family Ties. So let's let's get into this, shall we? And let's just start it here. Sometimes you get an idea in your head. 
mm-hmm. and it just won't go away. And you, you're stubborn about it. Even though you're wrong, you just keep being <laughs> stubborn about it. That is what's going on here with the stairs. Are Listen, you sure? I no no no. I I am right about the stairs. In no, what, you're wrong. In what you I am so saying. Wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> The stairs are very much evocative of the stairs in Full House in the way that they come from above and then make a direct turn down into the living room. I mm-hmm. believe that was intentional. You know what's not and, evocative, though? There's not a full house. <laughs> it's, but, it's true. It's, it's literally, true. yeah, no. And the kitchen has a lot of elements of Full House as well. The but that's kitchen not what... has a sign that is the same sign from Family Ties. See, it it does, Piet- absolutely. If Pietro was in this, you'd have a little more Listen, I started it by saying I was stubborn and wrong and I be- and I believe oh, I thought you that. were saying Danae was. That's uh, what that's exactly what you yeah, I got that same oh, impression. Oh, no, 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 me. I'm the stubborn wrong one here. No, Danae is way in the right here. Like it is much I'm more so family glad, ties than than full I'm house. So glad we got there because you were going to get some hate mail in our PO box. <laughs> I just No, 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 no. I, Man, I'm sorry I wasn't clear. No, I am the stubborn me. wrong one. I am I'll, the stubborn wrong one. But what ha- but here's here's where let me tell you where the seed of the stubbornness comes from. The stairs is what I have locked into on every single episode as, oh, I see what they're doing with the set design there. The stairs from the first episode are right in the same place they are in the Dick Van Dyke show. The stairs in the second episode are very much like the bewitched uh, stairs coming down kind of in the right. center of the living room. Yeah. Um, and so I had already locked into the stairs. And when I watched this one, I was like, where do I know those stairs from that come down like that and, you know, come down into the, you know, like an open living room that's right by the front door over to the left. And I was like, I think that's full house. And so I did a search for full house. I was like, yes, those are the stairs. It's also Roseanne. (laughs) The stairs in Roseanne don't look like that, do they? They don't come down the same way. I don't know. They come down and they turn into the living room. There's, it's, it's okay. It's. It's what happens in these sets. So yes. So, so my stubbornness on that comes from that seed of. That, you know, that's where my thought process worked. Um, and and then it was confirmed, not the stairs, but the full house part is confirmed by the running in the park and the opening credit. Like there's definitely some winks at full house going on sure. in the no, kitchen, that's... in the living room, in the opening. But I it's think not... it's just the 10 of us. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but Mr. Guy, Belvedere. Believe Mr. me Belvedere. when I say, believe me when I say, we argued about this for a full day and a half, at least, as well, we yeah, were finishing up this script. So for a little <laughs> sneak in, like the Slack channels are set up to where um, <laughs> the shadower is not in it until they have to be. Right. So yes. I yeah. get brought into this Slack channel <laughs> to look at the script and there is like pages of <laughs> Aaron and Danae talking about <laughs> stairs <laughs> from, but from the very beginning and... from the very very beginning we both agreed or maybe i just agreed <laughs> that it was an uh, you you don't think it's all family ties right you just think no, that's I, the main influence. i don't know no but i think I, that's the main the main yeah i think it's the main that's the structure i believe so, so too. So, so here's my perspective on it i definitely agree that they're doing a general sense of here's a vibe this is mm-hmm. a vibe and that's yeah. actually evident in the episode that released this morning We talked about it before the show. We can't really tell you a whole bunch of our opinions because it would be major spoilers for anyone who hasn't watched the most recent episode. But even the introduction is a mashup of different styles. Mm -hmm. And so I agree. However, what the one part that I didn't agree on, and then we kind of changed it and massaged the verbiage so that I was a little bit more like, okay, fine. I I can live with this being this way. Listen. Was that it, 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 the original sin that was written was like, this is clearly right. these stairs, the stairs from are this clearly show. clearly from Full House, right? Yeah. And yeah. I was like, they're not, though. And I was, pro- <laughs> and I was providing <laughs> visual representation <laughs> of like, here is the stairs from right. Family Ties right, right. with the exact. Same, yeah, but the carpet. stairs and family. The part <laughs> I'm talking about, the that, stairs though, look nothing like the stairs from <laughs> Family Ties. You're just talking dialogue, about the carpet. I'm pretty sure if like Michael Gross and Meredith Baxter <laughs> Bernie had showed up at the end of the episode, Aaron would still say it was Full House. <laughs> no, that's that's a mischaracterization. Here, no, I always thing. said no, 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 it was hold Family on, hold Ties. On, hold on, hold on. What, what what I didn't want to quote unquote allow to happen is to make a very easy Full House Olsen twins joke. 
I wanted it to actually make sense. Right. And so the the way it makes sense and the way that we can do it and still have fun is certainly the park. And so at the very you, least, you were doing I agree God's with the park. work, Danae. You were I doing do God's work. To this day, I do not agree with the stairs, I, no, and but that's I, I'm, okay. I'm with you more than but ever. Okay. You, no, you were doing God's work, and <laughs> I was not listening. I was being stubborn, and honestly, that sin should have been all about the park. The, the stairs should have never been in that sin, and I apologize what, to you publicly. What changed your mind? Just over time. Just like it, whatever that <laughs> fog is, lifted. You yeah, know, that stubborn you got, you got fog. COVID. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> you got COVID. Cleared your sinuses did up. You, no, no, no. You, fog. Did either of you watch Family Ties? I did. I watched every oh, episode of Family yeah, Ties. Yeah. I did too. Yeah. I did not. I was just it, curious. The, this, it, it's and funny a lot of full because house. Yeah. I actually do agree that the shape of guys. I'm so sorry. This is this is why you listen to the show. Um, <laughs> the shape of the stairs curving into the room mm-hmm. is definitely more Full House than Family Ties because Family Ties it hits a landing and turns the other direction mm-hmm. entirely. Yeah. So. You're not, I don't think you're completely wrong. Well, I'm I wrong think, in saying it's obvious and clearly and that's right. what it is. And this is the indicator. Like all that stuff was way exactly. over the top. Like, So I think we did a good job in kind of massaging it and saying something more bland about it. Like uh, this is a wink or a nod. Instead, we kind of found that common right. ground where it's like, I think it's, oh, how, did, how did we word it? Parts of this episode right. um, are a wink and a nod. But originally it was like, it was this much is clearer. exactly yeah, what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I publicly I apologize for my stubbornness on that. <laughs> you were absolutely right to want Guys, to change it. We made it through one <laughs> sin. Um, I also really enjoyed, though, Aaron had a great one where he pointed out that in the credits, there's an exclamation point behind mm. one of the kids' names and not the other, which also is a wink to favoritism, which we had in the previous episode. Mm-hmm. So that was just a fun little kind of continuation. The We have to talk about the pants not being mandatory. Uh-huh. Sure. Um, can you can you take this one though? I can because sure yeah. This... You made this one sing. <laughs> well, listen. Here's the thing. You uh, you said a uh, free balling. I think in your original sin. I said free balling, and then my sin that I wrote originally like was something like, oh, let me go find it. Okay. Let me go find what I wrote because I can't remember if you did a like uh oh no you did you you did like a vulva vooming or something a vulva like voom. I yeah. said vulva vo- like a free balling and vulva vooming is what I said <laughs> right okay <laughs> <laughs> which is funny and that would have been fine but I just knew I, I in my brain I was like well here's here's what my brain does the the alliteration in that is fun the you know mentioning the vulva is is always great like you know that's that's <laughs> That's no, Anytime it really is. We, the vulva. we we are much we are much freer with mentioning male <laughs> genitalia than female genitalia, oh, yeah. and I I love that w- that we normalize the vulva. Correct, normalize <laughs> the that, vagina, isn't normalize that the, the vulva. Thing too, where they're trying to figure out what her name. Ri- they think her name right. rhymes with Dolores. Vulva. Yeah, yes, yeah, Mulva. I think Mulva. <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway, they know so it I, rhymes with the, They know it rhymes with a a a sexual part or right. whatever a body part. Right. And, so we went through like in in the moment I was like the thing I don't like about it is that there's just missing one piece is that vooming doesn't really mean like right necessarily like loose or free yeah, or loose is the like wrong word sorry or something right like, yeah like, yeah, like there's a fast. speed element to it and so I was like Which there's got to be something I, better than I, that I was with you and I was like I don't have it I don't got it but this is the best I can do so can I think I, I went with like how, a, how many how was it like. Half a day later, was it hours later? It was uh-huh. like six hours later. Yeah. <laughs> well, in because the in the moment, we like we were throwing things around like labia loosening or which you know, is not which it just at is all. not good. I mean, <laughs> it was it was uncomfortable, and it's something that isn't it labia. Only... <laughs> I think you can yeah, pronounce la- it both ways, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Maybe it's la- I, it is labia, but I, I but I've I've heard labia as well. No, it's labia. I think you're right. I think you're maybe right. Maybe like left and right. One's a labia, <laughs> one's a labia. You know. Let's call the whole thing off. Listen, it was hilarious because these are the conversations we have for our job. Right. And it's like, God, thank God we're friends that we're just like, this isn't, <laughs> it's just, so we're like messaging back and forth. I was like, I don't got it. I don't got it. And then there's just like radio silence. We go about our day, you know, we're, we're working on our jobs. We're doing our thing. I'm in the car with Justin. We're like, I think we're on our way to get Iris or something. Like we're in town and he just sends me this message directly, not even like in the Slack channel. And it just like, there's nothing else that just says Clamando. <laughs> 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 I just 
lose my shit. I start, I am so I cry laughing because it's just, first of all, it's so perfect. Second of all, I know Aaron, he's been thinking about it nonstop <laughs> all day until he came up with Clam Mando. <laughs> And then Justin's like, what's so funny? And I just, I'm like, Clam Mando. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> Going Clam Mando. We're going to make that a thing. Oh, my God. I It was genius. Well, I ju- it's it just, fucking genius. It I love working with you. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, it, can, has there ever been anything before Clam Mando? No, there hasn't. No, this is no, it. This is that's what oh, it is. Oh, jeez. That'd I be would great say... if they remade Commando with like Ronda Rousey and called it Clam Mando. <laughs> Even though that has nothing to do with Even that title. nothing to do with it, yeah. Oh that would be God. great. I, I would say that this is a peak for you, Aaron, except for Tenet is coming up. So, <laughs> um, Oh, thanks. I uh, appreciate that. Just a couple others, and then you guys can take over. Uh, the, the the guy that goes briefly outside of the uh, the puppeteer's control that Vision kind of like wakes up for a second, mm-hmm. starts yeah. freaking out with the, you know, you've got to stop her. She's in our mind. Yeah, and that he's thing. great in that moment, by the way. Whoever that yeah. actor is, really good. Yeah, he's sh- kind of shifting in between that. Well, uh, just asking, does he see? Does he see then if he's outside of the control that Vision is like dead? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't know if that's ever going to be answered. Well, that's also um, one of the first moments where you realize these are real people that are. You yeah. know, suffering and it gets a little dark. It gets even it darker after this, which we talk yeah. about in a future episode. But yeah. But um, and then the the moment that the sin off that Aaron wrote about the roll credits and just that moment in the show is done so well. And I'm really glad that you took the time to kind of find a way to honor the show because I really enjoyed that moment. It's perfect. So, it's those really are the ones brilliant. I yeah. those are the ones I wrote. Uh, there, this lots one, of fun on this one. <laughs> lots of fun, and we're going to continue to have fun with this one. And the episodes are going to be longer when we have Wandavision to talk about because all three of us love the show and love talking about it. Um, well, and also they're going to be going into hour long episodes eventually. So. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this has aged well, um, and I guess I, I will say that without going into detail, so I'm not spoiling this morning's episode. Uh, but the line is, "It was all Wanda." And then the mm. sin is repeating your misdirection from the previous episode, hoping it will stick. Uh, that is a sin that has aged very, very well. Yeah, uh, considering, <laughs> considering some things. Uh, I I loved pretending like fluffing this pillow with my face is a sexual euphemism that the vision is using because <laughs> he's so stinking so horny. <laughs> This is like the horniest vision ever uh, in every single episode. And then, of course, I wanted to mention the just the the moment that Monica's like, we've run this test that shows that my outfit is made of Kevlar. I'm going to pull your gun without telling you and just shoot off a few rounds inside a non-protected, non-shooting you know, shooting range situation. Absolutely crazy. It's absolutely insane. And to the people in the comments who are defending this as she already knew it was Kevlar and it wasn't going to hurt anybody, this is not a safe space for that. Even if you know that's Kevlar, you're counting on your aim, you're counting on the ricochet, like crazy that's something that always gets me when they like there's that scene in die hard 2 where bruce willis is trying to prove that the gun has blanks so he just starts mm-hmm. firing it in a police station right like and nobody yeah. reacts and yeah <laughs> it's just there's always like moments like that in movies and tv that get on my nerves and then that the scene is immediately like see here's this test we ran it's kevlar and it's like then why did you need the like the yeah to prove it by shooting like you already ran the test like that scene Mm -hmm. is the sinniest scene uh in the entire series so far for me uh Mm -hmm. so i did want to mention that one another one that's uh aged well the look marvel we can spot pronoun gaming a mile away and our cine senses are all over this use of her and she uh, so take your sin for pronoun gaming and for teasing us with this Wanda or Agnes conundrum that we might have to wait weeks for an answer. I uh, wanted to mention that one as well. This is really fun. I'm really enjoying this. And, Me too. Uh, and Me glad too. That this we're is the most fun I've it. had uh, writing for TV sins. Yeah. I was thinking about quitting, you know, before this. So. <laughs> if only that weren't we true. We assigned Danae like four office scripts and she was like, um, you guys are <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> All right. Well, I found something else to do with my life. So yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go to uh, music video sins. Ariana Grande, Doja Cat, Megan, The Stallion, 34 plus 35. And if you're thinking we've already talked about this, you are correct. We are doing the remix on music video sins. And uh, yeah, what does Barrett have to say about 
this um, very condensed video. He says, the length of the 34 plus 35 remix video is not lazy, but extremely intentional. I got nothing from this video, not even a slight bulge. Thank you, Barrett. Uh, uh. <laughs> the song is catchy. I'll give it that, but it's just as one note as the first one. I love Megan and like Doja, but they bring very little to the proceedings here. In short, fuck this video. It is stupid fucking uh, in its stupid fucking face. He then goes on to Folgers and then goes, <laughs> you know, the mongoose can go to hell. And then says, so speaking of hell, I felt like that's where I was while watching He's the 34 plus 35 now. remix video. <laughs> He's doing because he listens. So. He does. Also, I cannot understand why she wants to be fucked all night. Even at my peak hormonal level, I wasn't interested enough in sex to go all night. You've got to stop and take a smoke break or get a beer or grab something to eat. Uh, I don't know that there's much to really say. No. It's a, about I mean, it's any a clever this, right? way. Like, it's a very clever way to. It is clever. Yes. Go about you know because it's just he's right. I mean it's kind of lazy. They just you know they throw in a couple guest raps and that's all they did to change it. But I mean good for them. Um, they're, making and I, their, they're making their coin. Yeah, and I like him. I like all three of them. And um, uh, you know, uh, as I've said in the past, when Doja Cat's on the screen, I hear nothing. So you know, it is what it is. But uh, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> I think we can move on to Cinema Sins. We'll kick it off with Friday. This was a Cher Watkins script. Barrett and Jonathan are writing on this one. Uh, okay, admission time. I've never seen Friday. I think I'm the only one of us uh, us three that hasn't seen this. Um, so I'm kind of... That's uh, a depend- first, maybe. I think it might be. I think it might be a first. Um, so what, do, yeah, what do you guys... I, when, what was your experience with this movie? I don't remember when I watched it, and I don't remember anything other than... Um, this being my first introduction, this is my first like get high movie that I ever watched. And I was with my friends who surprise like to get high. So, <laughs> um, you know, I thought it was funny. This is, I don't remember if this is the first time of, of like watching Chris. Yeah. It might be, but you know, it wasn't you know, a lot of people, right? You're talking about Chris Tucker. He hasn't been yeah. in that yeah. many movies. So at that point, yeah, that might be. And Still I, I well, really fifth, loved fifth it. element was after this, right? I don't. It was. I think yes. so. Yeah, it was yeah. like three years. Okay. After okay. This. Yeah. So I think this is it. Yeah, and I really like enjoyed Jeez. just the overdramatic silliness of it all, and the just the simple plot. And I didn't think anything, you know, like much of it, except for that I was then in on the inside joke of people being like, "You got knocked the fuck out," and you know, I I knew what that was from and could laugh along with it. And mm-hmm. um, when people would say, you know. You don't, you don't, you haven't got no job. You ain't got shit to do. I'd be like, I know that. I know that reference. Um, <laughs> but I don't remember anything else pretty much because when I watched, I didn't even remember by Felicia came from this until I watched the sins video. And I was like, oh yeah, all this other stuff happened. Cause it's just been so long since I've seen it. Yeah. But yeah. What about so you? I don't Jonathan? really have a lot to add to it. The, um, I, I saw it when it came out, I watched it. I mean, I, I watched it a decent amount. I do, um, I, I'm a huge uh, Ice Cube fan. He's uh, mm. like musical artist wise. He's like, you know, he would be like in my music pop culture makeup, mm-hmm. I guess. Sure. Uh, so I've always liked him. And, but I will say, at least at this point, his movies, other than like he did Boys in the Hood, which is obviously a very good movie, but he didn't make the, uh, the, the greatest movies, I guess, <laughs> most of the time. So this was better than most. So that's probably why. Did he make it? Well, I mean, he was, I'm just saying he was in it. It was a movie oh, he was okay, in. Oh, okay, I got sorry, you. Sorry, okay. yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's cool. I didn't look up, in, I didn't look that stuff up no. before. I mean, he might have been a producer today. or something, but no, he did not direct it because it's, um, I think it's gotcha. F. Gary Gray, maybe? I, I I don't know, but um, but I've always I just I like it. I dig it. It's uh, it's and it's a it's a favorite of my wife. So I've watched it with her several times. So I've seen it a lot over the years. Um, I think it's got a lot of uh, it's got a lot of charm to it. Um, it's got a lot of um, uh, it's got a really really avid fan base, especially in in this culture because mm-hmm. it's everything I've always heard about it was that it captures this culture really well. And, um, so it's always kind of been one to go to. So I, so, uh, I've always enjoyed that aspect to it. And, and, you know, Danae talking about like movies where people are getting high, this one definitely has a lot more going on than most of those. So I, <laughs> yeah, this gets the leg up over like something like how high or a uh, half baked or something for me. Um, there as long as a- it, as long as it doesn't get the leg over, uh, which I learned, <laughs> uh, is there actually, is. Actually, yeah, a what? sexual euphemism. That there is actually a- is a sexual euphemism. Yeah, it is. There yeah. is. Some- yeah, we, we send it. 
there is some toilet humor and stuff in this that like that's not my thing. So <laughs> right. right. So that aspect of it I don't enjoy as much. But there but there's a lot of I love the family stuff in it. I love the stuff with John Witherspoon who plays his dad, uh, the late John Witherspoon, uh, R.I.P. Um, uh, I like that kind of stuff more than I like you know the just getting high and uh, taking shits. But. Uh, <laughs> But overall, I think which it's was a good the movie. alternative title for the movie? I don't know if you yeah. knew that. Yeah. Uh, that was the work- taking yes, shit. Yes, <laughs> that was that was the working title for for Friday. But uh, no, overall, I think it's a, I think it's a good movie. Yeah, I just looked it up, and it's like uh, the Hood cult classic. And I feel like it's weird because I I don't have like a tie to to that, and so it's strange for me because I now I think I would understand way more than I did when I watched this how important the movie is for representation and things like that, but. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't understand that at all when I watched it. So sure, yeah, yeah. F. Gary Gray did, in fact, direct it. By the way, Barrett had a few things to say. He did. Uh, Friday is a slightly less confusing movie than Tenet. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been a pleasure to watch, and of course, everyone knows the memes and gifts that sprung from its loins. The things that. Not things. The thing that bugs me is that nothing really happens, even though the two lead characters are threatened with murder in the middle of the day. Craig, Ice Cube, also has a very strange reaction when he first first smokes the weed. I don't think I've ever had visual or auditory hallucinations, no matter how strong that shit is. I don't want to do the thing where I pretend to list my bona fides in order to sin an African-American movie. But because as much as I think I have them, I simply don't have the experience of growing up in black America. But the perspective of the perspective of the narrator character, and then in parentheses, not me and certainly not Jeremy. And the character has a very unique perspective. Uh, Did I read that right? (laughs) I don't know. That character is also occasionally dumb. So that's where I'm at. I'm proud of the video and still like the movie. I, yeah, I watched this and uh, was immediately like, man, I, I need to watch this. This seems like a really, you know, just kind of loose, fun, ridiculous comedy. I just got done watching um, Barb and Star uh, go to mm-hmm. Vista Del Mar, and I'm just like, I really do have a soft spot for just absolutely bonkers, dumb comedy. <laughs> like, it's there's there's some real fun to be had there. And there so, is. If it's, and there's well, also there's a, a nice... there's a there's an art to it though. Like, sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so there's an art to that, just like there is any kind of film. Sure. So, absolutely. I think, yeah. I think it's important too to remember some. Sometimes the pacing shift, like he talked about, nothing happening in this movie, it reminds me of Napoleon Dynamite. It's like right. nothing is happening in this well, movie. And I was going to say around this time period, I mean, you had this kind of like you know Kevin Smith's Clerks came out around this time, and uh, like Richard Linklater was doing movies like Slacker, Dazed and Confused. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think this falls into kind of that category as a whole because it, it definitely was. It has that like mid nineties feel of just you know people hanging out yeah. and you know yeah and it and, and, and like and from what I've under you know from what I'm hearing from the people that watch the video you know it's very real to life in a lot of ways. I mean, there's obviously there's movie things in it, mm-hmm. but the the conversations they're having and the the characteristics of the parents and stuff like that is very mm-hmm. real to life. And I think, I think that was kind of the, that indie scene going on uh, yep. with this type of film at the time. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's get into the sins. I'll kick us off uh, this time. Uh, Craig got fired because he was caught on tape, stealing something not necessarily on his day off. I thought was uh, a really good point because of that, uh, yeah. you know, that line or whatever. And I loved the comparison. This is like finding out you're pregnant while your partner's away on business and somebody asking, how do you get pregnant while your partner's away? <laughs> it's like, you make a fair point. You make a fair point. Uh, star 69ing, the 90s were truly a savage time, kids. <laughs> <laughs> loved that. Does uh, Star 69 still work? I, I would, maybe on landlines? I haven't had a landline I in I'm gonna call 21 you. years. <laughs> like, yeah. I... We got rid of our landline like at the turn of the millennium, like before a lot of people even did. We were just like, we're done with landlines. We all, you know, we've got cell phones. So, yeah, I don't know if it works or not. So, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, hey, Aaron, you- grab your phone because I'm going to call you. <laughs> but you why to- would they? Why would you do that on a cell phone? Because it would show your number. Well, but that's the point of Star 69 is it's not supposed to. What? No, no Star 69 Star 69 is, is, get is, to call is when you get back. Well, Star 69 oh, is when you yeah. call somebody back. I know what you're I, talking about. Um, what was the one that would block? It's star something else. I don't remember what it is. Yeah, I, don't I know. see. It's been too long. 
Yeah. I forgot. There was one that would block you from being seen, and I hear all of the BTS fans screaming into the ether right now in the future. <laughs> Could be. Uh, I will see the tweets. Tweet at us. Let us know what it is, because um, I had to do that before prank calling. <laughs> no, there definitely is a way to block your number, though, because there's also a way to like not let calls like that come through. Like If yeah. it's an unknown number, you're, it's going to go directly to your... Um, you know, you're whatever. Okay. So then, so then we got to test it. So then to do this, Aaron, I have to call you and then you have to press star, star six, nine to call me back. That's how we have to test this. Yeah. But that's what I'm yeah, saying on a cell phone. You on wouldn't... a cell phone, you just hit call back. Shh, like... shh, shh, shh. That's not the point. <laughs> that's not the all point right, at hold all. Hold on. So I decline he's the gonna call. Get, he's going to get How do I even do this? this? I don't even get know like how a, to. <laughs> he's going to get some random like 495 fee on his. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I just <laughs> accidentally declined the call. I have no idea okay. how what I'm no, supposed okay. to be doing okay, here. Okay, so now you now you go to your keypad. Do you know where that is? On I'm sure, phone? but Adam, nothing, you, my keypad you is press, completely independent you from press, the... You press star six nine and just hit go and she see what happens. See, she just wants to see what happens. All right, yeah, all yeah. right, all right. Hold on. Let me go to my my keypad then. Um, that would be the phone <laughs> app. Uh, you accept uh -huh, the charge uh -huh. the of two ninety nine. And uh, I'm gonna have to pay for that. There was like those 900 numbers. Six, 900 nine. numbers aren't a thing anymore, right? They can't be, right? And Hurry. I hit send. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And the... it's calling star six nine. Okay, 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 okay. Oh my god, this will be so fun nine, if it works. It's one, nothing's one, happening. For customer assistance. <laughs> that That's... Okay, well. Like, Experiment. is information even still a thing? Like, can you dial 411 and... I don't know. I mean, and honestly, Aaron, I don't... Aaron, dial 411, No, honestly, I'm done spending our show <laughs> experimenting on phone numbers. We are moving okay, on. Fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, this term, the by Felicia sin, where it says this term is so interwoven into our culture that I wouldn't be surprised if 2020 Ice Cube terminated himself back to 1995 yeah. and purposely it's, put it in this movie so he'd it, get the credit. It's always interesting with the because there's st lines like that where you're just like you got to do something because this is so well known. But sometimes yeah. it's, it's hard. I'm, I'm almost positive. I know Barrett wrote that one because I couldn't. I couldn't come up with anything. So, so can, can I ask for my next sin? Can I ask a uh, drug ignorant question? Because I wanted to to my more drug educated friends. Uh, oh yes, that's a common side effect of smoking marijuana, the immediate visual hallucinations. If I am to believe pop culture, I thought hallucinations were a side effect of smoking marijuana no. because anytime you see somebody get high, it's like, whoa, the peanut it would have butter's to be talking. I, like, no. I'm just like, well, is, that, is that real? So that's not real. Marijuana is not a hallucinogenic. So hallucinogenics so, are like shrooms, uh, acid, ecstasy. Does Come that over, stuff make the... I'll help you out. We'll give you some real hand experience. You can, you can have hallucinations, yes. Um, I, I think people react differently. That's but, true. Um, and there are different strengths of, of bud. So, I mean, there could have been like a really strong strain. Or it was uh, mixed. So, and it could have been mixed with something. That's why you have to know your drug where... dealer. There's a scene in there where uh, Chris Tucker smokes marijuana laced with uh, angel dust, so um, um, which is a hallucinogen. Yeah, can I go back though? Um, did you say something about my peanut butter? What I said, uh, like, oh, my peanut butter's talking to me, like oh. you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Like I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. <laughs> that is the indication I get sometimes. I guess anything's I've, possible. I've been very paranoid after smoking weed, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, for sure. But I've personally never hallucinated like that, okay. especially not seeing like a, a a head in a cupboard. Right. So yeah. I think I think it's a good sin. I think it's a good sin. Uh, even if you haven't watched this movie before, you've watched this movie. If you've spent more than two cumulative hours scrolling Twitter, I can confirm uh, that sin. So what about you guys? Jonathan, what did you have? Uh, you had a lot of them. I will say the one thing I was really uh, happy they got left in that I wrote was the, or Barrett and I worked on was the one about uh, uh, Debbie, the Nia Long character at the end, like how her art gets a little bit shortchanged because they have to give her reason for Craig to save her, even mm -hmm. though she's this whole time been like this really, you know, tough individual. And, uh, and I'm not saying people don't need help sometimes, but I don't know. It just seemed, it seemed kind of out of character for the movie. Like when the guy, when the tiny Lister character, like just smacks her down 
And then, you know, and then Craig has to come in there. And I think we called him, uh, she needs the knight in flannel is what we called mm-hmm. him. Yeah. <laughs> So I was I was uh, I was proud of that. I also love how Barrett mentioned uh, that the movie just kind of I mean the Debo character, the Tiny Lister character, he's definitely kind of a villain. But I mean he's not the one that like put a hit out on them and like these people with machine guns show up and try to kill them. Yeah. But then we just the movie kind of forgets about Helm and decides to make Debo the main villain at the end. So I thought that was really observant of Barrett to to point that out. And then there's that one part where they're like, "Hold me closer, Tiny Lister." I thought that yeah. was that was a little weird. Tiny Lister little also sadly not with us anymore. Aw, yeah. No Holds Barred was the first movie I ever saw him in. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Danae, what about you? Uh, pointing out the the milk carton that they just connected. changed carnation. Yeah, they, they just connected the M's. That was genuinely funny. One nut worm cracked me up, and then sending the or or. Uh, uh, paying homage to the you got knocked the fuck out but then sending it later because it happens twice and forgetting that it happened twice, i just <laughs> thought that was really clever yeah, it was cleverly great. done that was barrett let's move on to tenant uh this was an atkinson dicer script chris and i writing on this one uh boy Should oh we start boy oh with boy chris's commentary sure. yeah on let's it? do it and Go then we it. can kind of hear because honestly guys i'm not going to have much to say I haven't seen this movie and it was very confusing yeah, to watch I'm the sure. Sins video yeah. about this one. So, um, I mean, I'm very impressed. I, w- I, I had that thing happen. I can give you like a little preview. I had that thing happen where I'm like question my ability to do my job after watching your guys's, <laughs> you know, right. Cause it was, it's, it's incredibly impressive to me. Um, I was, the, I was, I was, I was pretty curious. thankful. I didn't get assigned that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, did you did you I poop yourself the, a little I bit? Think Aaron? I did. That was, I think I, the I, perfect I, two people got to sign this. I mean, I think I think Jeremy well, thanks, would have done a great job as well. But uh, yeah, I, you would have too, and Danae, you would have figured oh, out a way to have some fun no. with it and too. Would have been great. No, but, no. Yeah, no. I uh, honestly was honored. Like I was like, oh, like this is a this is a big undertaking, and you know, let's go, coach. You know, like it's one of those like, coach, put me in. Let's do this. Uh, and I am. I honestly, I think I can say I'm I'm very proud of what we did here. I, you know, this is this is shot up the list of my favorite writing experiences. Uh, you know, awesome. really going into into depth on this one, and I had a really good time collaborating with Chris, who also took this very seriously and like studied yeah. a lot of the stuff. And you know, at the end of the day, I think what, uh, Chris probably talks about this. This is probably why we should uh, okay. hear what Chris well, has to say first. So okay. let's let's hear what Chris has to say. He says, it's been a while uh, since I watched a movie this much before going into a Sins video. Right. Beginning a week before I was scheduled to write on it, I watched the movie twice all the way through and then watched certain scenes and then in parentheses in all caps, you know which ones, (laughs) (laughs) probably more than 10 times. Then I went and did research, which here's something for you behind the Sins fans is something I don't like doing when it comes to quote unquote understanding a movie. That's sort of the rub with Tenet though. I don't think we can make a good video without comprehending the very basic things or else the whole script becomes a, what the hell is going on? And we had plenty of that. By the way, did you know that certain websites claiming to know what happened in Tenet don't really know either? (laughs) Yeah, there are contradictions. Also, did you know that in the making of, which I also watched in preparation for the Sins video, people working on the movie didn't know what was going on sometimes. They had a bunch of Hollywood's best all arguing slash debating on how a certain scene should go. And here's why Tenet is confusing. You have people who move forward in time like normal. Then you have people who go through a portal and they become inverse, moving backwards through time. And everything they see is like rewinding an old VHS tape, uh, except their own body. Then you have to add to the confusion, whose perspective is it? The person moving forward, observing the person moving backward and vice versa. During the big car crash scene, it's really tough to figure out if Elizabeth Debicki is moving forwards or backwards because of who she interacts with in that scene. Mm -hmm. And in the end, that's the bulk of the confusion you get with Tenet. Forward characters interacting with backward characters doesn't make much sense when you break it down as Aaron did with the protagonist versus inverse protagonist fight. 
Aaron came up with the idea of subtracting sins in reverse time when they were actual sins and making them quote unquote additions when we liked something. He may have had the same idea as me, but I suggested we run the timer backwards whenever the movie was in reverse time. So yeah, we decided we were going to make this video with some level of confusion as the movie itself. By the way, interesting tidbit, we did the reverse timer in the original Superman sense video when Superman flies around the world to go back in time. I can't explain really why, but my favorite sin that I wrote was pointing out that Robert Pattinson's weirdness at the end of the movie, it was something that weighed on me from some t for some time, but Christopher Nolan is so good at covering his bases. I wasn't confident that I was right. But when we see Pattinson running backwards during the scene where Ives and the protagonist recover the device, Pattinson is going to run into a giant cave-in I don't want to rehash everything here, but this bothered me. And during the combine phase, I asked Aaron about it. After talking to him, we came up with a solution and I was satisfied, but something kept bugging me about it. And finally, I was able to talk my way through it and it became a sin in the script. I think it's also funny that in, uh, that in three separate instances, Aaron and I wrote about the impossibility of damage showing up on any of the objects we see during the movie, movie, meaning if you were to go in reverse time, that damage would be there forever. The bullet hole at the opera that shows up before Pattinson saves the protagonist, the side view mirror on the car during the car chase, and Pattinson, him, Pattinson himself towards the end. I almost thought we should cut those, but I think hammering home the fact that fact is something worth mentioning multiple times. When does the damage first appear? In the car's case, you sit there and think, shouldn't the side view mirror look like that when it's sold in a lot? Hell, when it's manufactured and someone still bought it and never fixed it. Paradoxes, man. That's, yeah, yeah. Two, two, uh, two word summary of this movie. Paradoxes, man. Um, yeah, I, I have so many things bouncing around in my head i think you know the the interesting thing here's what i want to know from you guys how much of this next our, our next time together discussing the tenant sins video <laughs> do you want to be me going deeper into our conversations about how this stuff works and how much do you want it to be this was a fun video let's talk about the stuff we liked like what is like what Whatever do you, you think you want to talk about man well, I mean, I I could talk about this a long time, but again, we spent so much time really trying to figure this out. And what I was starting to say was, and Chris mentioned it in his thing as well, we felt a responsibility to understand as much as we could so that we we weren't just being just completely this is this is crazy, this is dumb. This like that we were able to actually sin some things. It's weird too, because I should go back. Like I when I said, you know, thankful I didn't have to do this. I mean I I, I I'll take on any challenge. But this one just seemed more challenging than most. But the weird thing about that is I, this isn't well. In my opinion, this isn't like one of the greatest movies of all time. It's a really good movie, right? But but it's interesting to me that like something that like is far greater of a film to me, I wouldn't think as much of a challenge. But there's something about this one and something about the people that love it and are really getting into it. And I just I, yeah, like you said, it would almost feel like there's an obligation and uh, uh, yes to that. And I am one of those people who love this movie. I yeah, still I oh, even I e even after going this in depth. I really do love this film. I mean, it, there's a lot of BS here and there is, you know, when you really start to think about it, the paradoxes do pile up. Um, and uh, again, to some of the, and there weren't very many of these uh, comments, people saying, well, this is how that worked. Um, I don't have the time to go in into this with you, but you often forget things and, you know, are, are missing key factors. That was part of the conversation we had about Pattinson, why there's not a how he got in there in reverse time. And I still believe there is a way, but what, 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 where Chris landed was that way is so abstract and crazy that we need to send the movie, you know, uh, for it because on its, on surface level, it really doesn't make a lot of sense, but there, there is a way he could have, uh, dug out all of the, like the, um, the cave in, and then waited a few moments, mm -hmm. gone and reversed himself, and then got inside before straight uh, regular version him is putting all that back, you know, because he dug it out and then regular him would be putting it back as he's waiting in there. He would have had to get inside, you know, uh, before that happened, and then he's just waiting there 
uh, for them to come through. That is the only way it works, but it's so complex that, you know, he, that I think he's right in saying we can't, the movie shouldn't get credit, credit for something, the work that we have to do, you know, to, to yeah. figure out something that complex. In other instances, like the paradox of things being broken and when did they get broken, those are just paradoxes that don't work. They break reality. Um, and the idea of, you know, decomposing in reverse time and how does that, mm-hmm. like, even work, you know, when that, uh, that structure was built, how was there already a skeleton there? You know, like, it's just like all that kind of stuff is just a paradox worth pointing out. So I'm glad we did that work, but at the end of the day, we want a fun, entertaining video. And so I think we found some clever ways, uh, to do that as well. And, uh, yeah, I'm kind of super proud of how this turned out and, uh, reading the comments, it feels like, uh, people did enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, that's so, the cool thing yeah. too. It seems like most, I mean, you're going to get people that are, you know, I mean, you're just going to get people that are going to be detractors, obviously, but like, it seems like most people get what you guys were trying to do and um, and can see it's the fun. work that was it's, put in. And we very purposefully left a lot of that stuff pretty subtle with the timer and the sins. I mean, it's obvious once you know what you're looking for, but even in the comments, people are catching it on different levels. Like for a lot of people, they're like, oh, they reversed it halfway. And so everything in the second half is, and that's not it. Now, if you're paying attention, that's not it. Uh, and then some people are catching exactly what's going on, but, but very few. And then there's one moment that nobody has caught yet uh, that, that I've seen in the comments that really bring home what we're doing here. And um, and I'm not sure I want to spoil it here and behind this. I mean, this would be <gasps> the place to spoil it, I guess. But You're supposed to do that here. Okay, Listen. I can't. Yeah, oh, you know as what, a reward. Though? I caught it. I'll just tell everybody. <laughs> okay, what was it, Danae? Sin 71. Oh, is that what it was? Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's two it. away from 69. And nice. I also, you know, I love, I love that we titled it "Everything Wrong in Twelve Minutes or Less" because that's where the the timer ends. Even yeah, though that obviously was real, the video that was is really funny, twenty four minutes long, and so people are like, "What is going on here?" And then they start to figure it out, and um, <laughs> that's the. But then you really want people being like, "This video is not really twelve minutes," because you, you get that all the time, anyways. <laughs> like. The video's not really 17 minutes. Uh, so, in people asking, well, how many sins does it actually have? Like those, those like uh, sin people who think that the counter is, you know, actually means something, and they're just like, I have to mm-hmm. know. I have to know how many actual sins. <laughs> and I do know that number, by the way. Um, but you in no big, I would think you, I mean, you could figure it out if you uh, wanted you to. You could if you're paying really close yeah. attention. But again, as mentioned in the video, there's one point where it's like, is this a sin or is it not? I don't know. And I don't even know if you do either. Like there are moments <laughs> where like, even if you figured out what we're doing, yeah. which again, very few people well, really have. Um, and when it's going backwards, you, you give sins back to right. So, right. And it right. goes forward. So yeah, you would really have to pay attention. I mean, you could do it, but yeah, yeah, I, I'm not going to, I haven't seen somebody uh, name the right number yet. Um, but uh, but again, I don't know if I want to if I want to spoil that here or not. What do you guys 71. think? Seventy one. <laughs> it is not seventy one. <laughs> Sin seventy one is when everything starts to reverse. I have no that's idea what, what it that's is. That's what some people are saying, but those people are wrong. I so, have no idea. Yeah, this is. Uh... What do you mean? <gasps> <gasps> oh, I have access to the Slack channel. You Hold sure on. do. You have access to the script. You can just read in the script what's going on. And that okay, was, okay, okay, that okay, was okay. another part of this was communicating all of this through the editing process on, was really on, interesting. On. If you look at the script we wrote, we have like color coded certain things. We have running sin totals color coded a, a certain way. Um, like, you know, we had to make it really clear what we were thinking here. And so. And they did a good job. They did a great job. Great and, job. And yeah, so. Yeah, it was it was a really interesting this process. Would have been, this would have because you know when you know Aaron and I used to do a lot more of the edit or the you know we'd get the edits and we'd mess around with them and stuff. And this is one I think would have been fun. Yeah, yeah. To yeah, kind of help help build. I think they had a good time with it. It's definitely complex. Lots of props um, for yeah, you know what they're doing. So. Well, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, let's let's get into oh, you know we never really I guess I mentioned I liked the movie. Um, Jonathan, you're more mixed on it, right? Like you no, kinda no, have... no, no. I, I really, really like it. No, I think oh, okay. it's I think it's really good. I just like it, you know, it's not gonna be like I'm not it's you know, it's it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's a really um, good movie. Yeah, I, don't I know, know you haven't seen it. So, um, so we can kind of get into the sins of it. Danae, before we do, you have a quizzical look on your face, which isn't a surprise oh, considering the, the video we're talking about. But I'm, I'm just reading the seven paragraphs that <laughs> precede <laughs> the script. Some sin moments, and I don't. I think that you've already mentioned them. So I'm trying to figure out which one is the. Th- what's the thing? What did we miss? Oh, what did you miss? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I will say the thing you missed isn't in the script. Uh, it happened in then the editing I process. The I don't right know. Now. It happened in the editing process, and um, man, I kind of want—I kind of both want to spoil it and not spoil it. But okay, here's what you do: you spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> how, about we wait, how about we wait a week and next next week's keeping what? tabs? I'll I'll talk about it then, and that gives no. people a week to. He okay. can tell you off air. <laughs> that's true, Danae. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if, it's, if that's what no, you're no, concerned no, no, here's about. What we're gonna do. Everybody take out your earbuds. Aaron's just going to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many people would actually like, <laughs> would actually just not listen versus would be like, I'm fucking listening. Are you kidding me right now? Yeah. Okay, I don't listen, know. We if have you're nice gonna, fans. They might. Here's, and they here's love my you. concern. Next week, I don't know that I'm going to care. That's true. You know? No, you won't. You won't care five minutes from now. Um, so I, yeah, I, the, the, it could be seconds. Any like I'm about to flip, and, and I represent. <laughs> I represent the people who like genuinely want to know right, right now. All right, I guess you have the power to Give pause. Me a hint. I, I guess you have the power. Give me a hint. Let's just say when it's obvious what's going on in this script, it has already happened by that point one other time. Uh, in the video so and there's a reason if you understand the reason we're doing what we're doing you would understand the other time uh it happens so here's the visual that's going along with this moment it's aaron holding a present (laughs) he's holding it over his head and talking about all the fun things that happen in order to get the present it's really not like a below aaron is it jumping up and down to nate too short to reach him (laughs) Trying to get to the present, not listening at all, just wanting to rip into it. That's the visual. <laughs> you're also just like holding on to your hood. Like it's I'm all, like I'm like also you're just over like, it. Let's move on. That just happened. I don't care anymore. All right. You just uh, you just switched over. Here's the sins that I liked. <laughs> um, I like the chloroform sin a lot. <laughs> Mostly because I really would like there to be a long list of all of the things that the narrator has said. Uh so that I've are like, heard. or so I've heard, just to kind of like put together this this sort of like version of the narrator. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh my god, I just remembered, I got a tweet from somebody who I, I need to go back and read that. I'm gonna do that for my comments. Um, I'll go try to find that. I've, let me write it down. I'll forget. Uh, Twitter. That's not gonna help me at all in ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Chris already pointed out, but the the mirror being busted and then comparing it to teeth, mm-hmm. having no idea what's happening with this movie, that actually helped me kind of understand oh, good. the confusion. I thought it was a good comparison. Um, the, the I like the sin that had all the memes mm-hmm. that were floating around on the mm-hmm. screen, just sort of like floating by. I thought that was very well done. The the lead in being, do you understand? And the sin being like, nope, nope I don't. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I, do, I don't. And then the skeleton one, I, which was already talked about, too. Those are the ones I wrote down. Jonathan, what about you? I love that you guys, I mean, which a lot of people have talked about how, like, you know, just Christopher Nolan's use of, of sound is interesting. And sometimes it's hard mm-hmm. to make out what people are saying. But, like, I legit do not understand how anyone watched this movie in the theater and understood what was going on. Like, I, it's, that opening scene, like, just the dialogue alone is so weird. Mm-hmm. That like without yeah. the sub, like they're like you know the orangutan went over to the bubble gum and you're like what like I, that's there was, not what they say but no I mean, no 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 but that reminds me I had yeah. written a uh, sin during that time where I I indicated to the uh, editors to put incorrect subtitles on that yeah. sounded like what they were like that orangutan thing you just said yeah and uh, and we ended up having some crossover so it ended up getting cut but I thought that would have been funny where it was like the, the subtitles were wrong it was so bad. Kind Kind of thing um, and i almost yeah. like and and there's something about it like i almost after all the stuff with with bane which i do actually the bane stuff i think got a little i think you can understand that for the most part but i almost feel like nolan was like trolling the audience he probably wasn't because i don't think he'd think about it that way but he's like i'm gonna put some mm-hmm. people in masks and have them say some weird shit <laughs> uh yeah. 
But I mean, yeah, without subtitles, I just I have no idea how I w- I would have been lost from the get go, and then would have been yeah. annoyed the rest of the time. So that that's no joke. Uh, the, to show you, I really mean business. I will fuck up your sheet music. Take that culture. <laughs> so funny. Um, this is a room filled with future corpses, and the movie knows it. I really liked. I loved bringing up Hollywood twenty seven thing I said at Hollywood twenty seven in nineteen ninety eight. Mm-hmm. Somehow makes it yeah. into the script about Armageddon. Yeah, I'm not seeing Armageddon here. I think was the line. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, either shit out a comprehensive theory of time or get off the temporal pot and uh, shit nanigans. I thought was very nice. You know, it was interesting. I saw some uh, comments on that one, too, and people were like, yeah, in inverted time, you'd actually suck poop back up inside you. And, <laughs> and, well, no. and I was sucking like, poop should never be said. <laughs> and, and I was like, and and I, I just I want I, I, I just want to correct people. I'm just like, no, no. According to your perspective, you would be normal. It's just that your poop would be inverted. Now, if somebody was watching you poop for whatever reason, it would look to them like it was getting sucked up back inside you. But yeah. That's, you know, that's hey, a different hey, thing. I just want to remind you that Jonathan has a thing about that. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I had to write a sin about, uh, I didn't have to, but uh, just through some uh, research I did for a future thing, I had to, I wrote a sin about VCs, which I was, I was both grossed oh, nice. out and proud of well myself. Done. Well done. Um, were you finished, Jonathan? Did you have others? Or uh, was no, that the... no, that was okay. what I had. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's a sin for every person in this section that upon finding their girlfriend wife's uh, seat said, look, I finally found your G spot. Uh, I thought that was funny. <laughs> and also funny that we added six sins as if we knew there were six people that made that joke. Uh, that made me laugh quite a bit. Uh, quick, say the response code. It's and we pledge our loyalty to Team Jacob. Just don't let Neil hear you. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was really funny. Uh, I wanted to talk about the the people who are just like, no, it all makes sense. And the part of the, the wall where it's like, okay, so they sent back this wall that had holes in it. Maybe they sent back the bullets, uh, somehow like the spent bullets in the spent casings, but you're telling me they spent, they sent back every microscopic piece of dust of this yeah. wall so that it could rebuild itself. Like it's just, when you start to think about the stuff, it just, it doesn't, really makes sense at all um i, I liked uh, do you run around the world seeing if you can yoda objects back into your hands like how do you even <laughs> find this stuff um the my cocaine uh joke was uh one that a lot of people liked uh you know the it, and it's again i will say this is not a joke uh that is um new like i've heard the my cocaine you know as michael kane's name mm-hmm. before uh but putting it in this format i think it uh it worked really fun and and people seem to enjoy it um the i'm not sure what frequency kenneth is operating on here uh, but you can probably find it on your dial somewhere around loves the taste of the scenery 0.7 FM. Uh, just love making a subtle. What's the frequency Kenneth joke, uh, yes. especially cause his name is, is Kenneth Brana. Um, and then the, uh, Remember when Gary Larson did the one far side cartoon called Cow Tools and nobody <laughs> knew I like what it that meant? One too. <laughs> this is Christopher <laughs> Nolan's Cow Tools. It's <laughs> great. Uh, and then I wanted to mention this one because this was a revelation to me when I actually mapped it out. It's the sin that says, man, this movie really is explodey, explaining, explaining, fighty, explaining, explaining, drivey, explaining, re- reverse drivey, explaining, explaining, reverse fighty, <laughs> explaining, explaining, reverse explodey, isn't it? Palindrome. <laughs> this literally is what happens in the movie. And I guarantee you it's intentional from Nolan that these scenes, even the exposition are palindromic. Like it literally is like a scene of exposition and then you know, uh, the fight, mm-hmm. then two scenes of expo- exposition, and then the driving, then another scene of exposition, then the reverse drive. Like, it's it's really fascinating how much of a palindrome he made this movie structurally, and until I mapped it out like that, I was just blown away that the, the expositional scenes were also, you know, like, spaced half and mm-hmm. half, and, and it just, it's really brilliant stuff that, that he's done here, so... Um, so yeah, I wanted to mention that as well. As I said, uh, right, right to the top of my pride list when it comes to the the work I've done. I, I really enjoyed doing this, and I think we we came out with some yeah, it turned out really some good. R- really fun stuff, and um, I'm glad people are enjoying it. So yeah, there you go. Tenant uh, was uh, by the way, I don't know if you know this. Tenant spelled the same forward and backwards. <laughs> I don't know if if you guys also, realized that. Also, Taco Cat. Also Taco Cat, indeed. Let's move on to keeping tabs. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. Ha ha! 
Oh, jeez. This is the most public yet of my many humiliations. All right, let's take a look at the stuff from the process of putting together this week's content. I had three keeping tabs, all three of which have been touched on already. Congratulations to us. Um, one of them was the chloroform. I did do research on that. Uh, apparently, chloroform doesn't even really knock people out, even if you do it right. Uh, right? It is. It is just. It just doesn't do that. It would take like. 10 minutes for somebody breathing nothing but chloroform to pass out. And that's more because they're not getting oxygen than anything that has to do with the chloroform. <laughs> so, uh, so the added fact that he didn't even put it over his mouth is just uh, the cherry on the, the cake. So yeah. And then the other stuff was all tenant process stuff that we've, we've chatted about as well. So what about you guys today? What is, uh, what's yours? Nothing. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I didn't do much research or, or tab, tab assemblage. Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan. Um, WandaVision, I'm just enjoying it, and I'm not really looking at I'm not really looking a ton of stuff up. Yeah, right now. Yeah, Jonathan, That's, what uh, about this, you? This is going to be a really exciting segment. Um, I uh, WandaVision, I did some. I kind of like ho- like looked back at like uh, did some research on Sword and Captain Marvel because I, those aren't things I'm that familiar with. But I didn't. I mean, there wasn't anything I really ended up using. Um, but I did look up if you could. I did look up if there were Elliot Ness posters. Oh yeah, uh, right. Sure, <laughs> of and course, I mean, as one does. Yeah, oh. and uh, because that's what he says. You know, he says the comment I had. I had posters of Elliot Ness instead of Michael Jordan, and I was like, "Could you really have Elliot Ness posters?" And then I remember the Untouchables. Of course, was a big mm-hmm. movie in '87. But then I, so then I made the comment like, "Yeah, there was good Kevin yeah. Costner posters where he's dressed up as Elliot Ness." But I couldn't find like actual like you could just go to Walmart, right, and buy like an Elliot Ness poster. <laughs> Uh, so I feel pretty confident about that sin after after yeah. looking through a bunch of stuff. But I I I guess I did look up the stairs. I forgot about that. Oh like I God, really did yeah. spend time course, doing that. Yes, that but again, we already talked was, about it. That was one of mine as well that we already talked about. <laughs> we already went there. <laughs> so did you talk about what? So what did you look up, Aaron? You were just uh, are you? I well, I talked about the chloroform, and then I was going to talk about the full no, house. No, I'm talking debate. about the stairs thing. Yeah, it's like, what on that? Did what oh, on I that? I just did. I just looked up the living room from Full House, and I was like, oh, okay. yes, that is looks just like the stairs. But uh, but again, we've been over how wrong I am about all of this. Uh, I guess I'll finish it up since none of us had a ton of stuff by talking uh, a little bit more about the tenant process and go ahead yeah. and spoiling some of that stuff for you. <gasps> if you want to pause Here and not hear this and try to figure it out yourself, you can. Number one, the actual sin total, if you did it uh, all in straightforward time, is 113. Um, that is obviously uh, means nothing. And I uh, just want to reiterate, <laughs> the total of the sins mean nothing about the quality of the movie. Uh, but yes, the number would be 113. The sin counter and timer go in reverse anytime the perspective of the movie is in verse time so when the movie itself would have a camera shooting people in inverse time everything is going in reverse um the first time this happens in the video is actually before the first time it happens in the movie though because we use footage from later in the movie to prove a sin earlier in the video so there is a moment early in the video where we jump to footage from later in the movie and for those split seconds the timer goes backwards for like a second or two and then forwards again. And it's really subtle. And, you know, I don't know if anybody will notice it on their own. So (laughs) then there are, (laughs) then there are obviously moments where later on, it looks like we've just reversed it for the rest of the video, but then they come back to regular time. So then it goes regular. So anytime the footage that's being shown is in inverse time that is uh when we tried to have the sins and the the sin counter go backwards and i think we did a pretty good job at it the 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 funnest one is the building where they show it blowing up and then reverse blowing up and then blowing up and reverse blowing up again Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you would think that would change four times but it only changes twice because the first time you're seeing it in inverse time as they're blowing it up in inverse time and then they're seeing it be blown up in regular time and then it cuts to showing the same thing in regular time as they're blowing it up in regular time and then seeing the inverse time blow it up at the same time. So there's only one switch in the middle of that sin where Jeremy, it's just, we told Jeremy to make noises and he's just like, oh, oh, 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that scene a lot. <laughs> it's so good. It's my favorite part part of the movie too. So yeah, I love that. So. Oh. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> so anyhow, there you go. There are all the uh, the secrets of the tenant uh, video. You can share with your friends and uh, I'm even more confused. To discover themselves. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm sure you. The are. visual is now ad- adjusted to Danae will- opening the present, being like, "Oh, ooh." Hey. <laughs> I will yeah. say though, I think the one thing about Tenet that keeps me from just like it's a classic. I I, I do think. Like movies can be challenging, but like I think this one goes beyond that. Yeah, like sure. Like there's a like there's a and and so I do kind of I don't know that I hold it against it, but I do find that a little annoying that like yeah. you know I feel like you have to watch this movie several times before you even eat. start to understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. And and I'm not opposed. I, I'll watch it again. I'm sure, but like I just I don't know. And then the fact that you have to have subtitles for a, a language that I speak, yeah, seems a little weird. Like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. I speak your language. Why? <laughs> Why don't I understand you? <laughs> All right, let's move on to the comment section. I want to know what you're thinking. I appreciate your honesty. You're a real straight shooter. You are the ones who are the ball lickers. We're just going to talk about a comment from the week's videos. Uh, Jonathan's going to kick us off. What's your comment this week? Uh, we actually kind of addressed this a little bit, but I, I from the WandaVision episode I worked on, uh, Sherry said, I know there are apple eaters out there working reception desks. And then she put, I understand that reference. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, Danae had mentioned that too. Uh, Danae, what about you? I have several that I wanted to uh, highlight. But that's not a surprise. Did Dan- well, no, did Janae say that exact one? Because I have another one. No, I can no, 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 no. Okay, she just okay. mentioned the idea that like people are excited about a- picking up on that kind of stuff. And okay, but you they- should do yours, both of yours, because yeah, I you have, have another several. One, go for it. Yeah. Oh, the only other one I had it was uh, I don't Ram- Ramat Avianto. I'm sure I screwed that up. Uh, TV sense. How do you remember a supporting character like Darcy Lewis or Jimmy Woo? Me. In my defense, sir, it's goddamn Cat Dennings. And for Woo, I did not realize it until I see a review on YouTube. <laughs> well, thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, Danae? I wanted to point out a few of them. Um, uh, a couple of them um, are from actually the BTS premiere from last week. Uh, there's a question, uh, a comment that I thought was funny, and an idea that I wanted to share with you Ooh, from okay. the premiere. So I'll, I'll start with the idea. Delinquent uh, during the premiere said, um, just got back from watching the Tenet video. Here's an idea. Do the segment on Tenet inverted. <laughs> so, <laughs> nope. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess you could just take a segment of us talking about it and then figure out how to reverse it in post. Listen, I don't listen your podcast player will probably play things in reverse if you ask there nice you enough. Go. So, there you yeah. go. And then you'll hear us say, hey, worship the devil or something. <laughs> yes. Um, Handquake uh, during the premiere, when when we were listening and, and chatting to it all, uh, to the BTS episode live on YouTube, um, said, Danae, is this the first time that you've actually heard the edit? And I had to say yes. <laughs> because <laughs> at that point in time, I hadn't. Um, and I was very, we were at the outtakes portion. And that was really, really hilarious. We all had a good laugh about that because I didn't know what Aaron had put into the outtakes. I was along for the ride, just like everyone mm-hmm. else at that point in time. Um, and they said, wow, you must really trust Aaron. And my answer was, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I uh, mean, I can think of like maybe two times where I've noticed something. He just like he left a double like, like two like an audio that repeated itself. Yeah, and it's yeah, very yeah. rare that it's, yeah. there's anything. Really, I want to tune in when I think we've talked about something really sensitive. Yes. And I, yes. I, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to cut that out. Um, but that hasn't happened in, in a long time. Yeah. Um, I'm basically learning how to keep my opinions to myself. <laughs> um, you know what? Before my question, I'll point out that at JetsMet1448 on Twitter wrote and, and said uh, on BTS said, interesting thing about South Park episode from last week. Um, when they were putting that together, they went to the World of Warcraft, like where it's made at Blizzard, mm-hmm. and they used their computers for the scenes. And uh, they had made a private server and somebody hacked into it and was jumping around. So somebody had to use this insta kill mod to get rid of that person, which ultimately inspired the episode. Interesting. And I didn't know that, and I thought that was really cool to learn. So I wanted yeah. to point that comment. I knew out. they and worked the qu- with Blizzard on it. I didn't realize yeah. that that had that had happened. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he also linked to the video uh, 
of like explaining that. So, and I didn't watch that video yet, but thank you for, for sharing. I think that was really cool. But the question uh, that I wanted to point out is from Daniel, uh, Danielle, sorry, Danielle K. Anderson, who was on the premiere, who asked Jonathan, Jonathan, how did you start doing the happy whatever day? How did that start? Um, that's very recent. At the, I mean, I can answer it if you don't remember, Jonathan. We did, well, happy Thanksgiving was the first one, right? But I tried to remember, but now I can't even remember where I got that from. It was you the got happy it, birthday. Yeah, oh, you got it, it from happy Frosty. Birthday. It was Frosty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We were, it was when we were doing Frosty the Snowman, and we were talking about that. And he does, I just think it's funny that he goes, happy birthday. And then... So I did Happy Thanksgiving, I think, and mm-hmm. then and then like we did the Christmas episode and New Year's, and then it just yeah. kind of turned into something. I think Hanukkah. I think you did Hanukkah before Christmas, and yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And now I just yeah, now it's a thing that I have to do every week. <laughs> and now I have created work for myself. <laughs> Welcome to and I usually I usually forget about it until we start the show, and so when you guys are not talking about something I'm not involved in, I start looking up what the days are. <laughs> Welcome to the handcuffs of running gags. <laughs> oh, I, yes. people, I hope people are enjoying it. So, well, do you, and, and do you think like the Simpsons writers are ever like, do we have to write another couch gag this week? Like, uh, oh like, my god, probably, I can't even imagine. Like, yeah, probably. Huh. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that that's how it works. Uh, my comment is from the tenant video. BOS says, Cinema Sins, John David didn't even eat in this movie, which we didn't talk about that sin. Uh, and then Malcolm and Marie, I got you, fam. Uh, I thought that was hilarious. You have to have seen Malcolm and Marie to get that joke, but he definitely eats in Malcolm and Marie. I still need to Marie. see Malcolm and Marie. So I that made me smile and I wanted to mention it. All right, let's move on to Beyond the Sins. To infinity. And beyond! Somewhere beyond my wild history. To boldly go where no man has gone before. We're just going to chat about something else from the world of pop culture that we've seen recently. Um, I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real, real quick, though. I, did, I figured something out in my head. So if anybody does want to listen to this in reverse, I'll just say Levid et Pissro. Wow. That's worship. The, that's worship the devil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we need to spoil well, it. They don't even have to do the work to figure it out now. <laughs> I don't think it would actually sound like that reversed no, though. No, that's the unfortunate no, you just thing. Pronounced I just pronounced like, it backwards. I wonder what that would be backwards because that <laughs> yeah. was the the Motley Crue album or whatever. Supposedly, yeah. oh, if you played it okay, backwards. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll kick us off. Uh, Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. Um, I'm going to talk about this as many opportunities as I get because, man, did this this movie hit all the amazingness. Uh, this is one I would recommend to everybody on the Sins team. Every last one of you uh, needs to watch this movie and needs to tell me what you think about it. And but you get a recommendation. It is. It and is. You. Here's, what, here's, here's the person who's not going to like this. A uh, person who's in the wrong mood. A person who just has no patience for ridiculousness. Um, in a person who wants things to make sense or they're no good, uh, because those are the only ways you're going to get, uh, distracted from how freaking funny this movie is. Um, listen, I, I, I have not, I have, it has been a long time since I've given myself to a comedy in this way where it's just like, oh, I am on your wavelength. I'm having so much fun. Um, this is so weird. This is, I mean, Kristen Wiig is a genius and she is just she is in her element here and man it's just there's elements of austin powers here like that just that that ridiculous over the top craziness there's Mm -hmm. elements of spongebob where it's just like surreal comedy kind of things um there's musical numbers in it that are just hilarious uh i just i had such a fun time with this movie and i don't want to build it up to the point where you're watching you're like how does he think this is a great movie? It's just a dumb comedy. No, that's, I get it. That's why I think it's a great movie because it's just a dumb comedy. Um, and if you give yourself to it, I think you will have an absolute blast. So I wanted to mention Barb and Star, v- go to Vista Del Mar. I'm really excited to get to see it. I just, I just haven't, I don't know if I'm going to pull the $20. It is currently uh, $20 to yeah. rent. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it, so we'll it, and honestly, if my uh, wife much, wants to watch it or something, maybe, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, if you have the twenty dollars and it's not something that's going to like break you and you're in the mood for a great comedy, then yeah, I'd still recommend it. But honestly, if money's tight, 
Wait till you can buy it because I think you're just going to want to have access to it anyway because this That's will be thing. a cult classic. Like this will be one of those movies that people watch over and over yeah. and over again and quote the lines and it is just that kind of movie. So you're going to want to own it anyway, I think. That's my thing on the $20 thing is like I just I want to own it. Like if I'm, you know, yeah, like if it was $20 if, to own, sure, you know, pull the trigger, but Cuz then yeah, I cuz no, then I what you. if I do want to own it, then I'm probably going to spend $20 down the road. So now all of a sudden I've invested $40 in this movie. <laughs> right. Which, to be yeah. fair, going to the theater, I probably do about that anyways, but you know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I I just thought it was also funny that Danae was updating Slack channels. Uh, yeah, well. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> Danae, I'm out. You, Danae, I'm I think over here you getting will like I'm over movie. here getting alerts on my phone. And I'm like, what is no, going? no. Here's the thing. I've I've already talked to you about this movie mm-hmm. because you have been so excited about it. And listen, the the movie poster is so intriguing to me. And I think I saw like a 12 second preview or trailer or something that i thought looked really really interesting to me this is definitely one that i think who is the other s- person it's what's Chris- that it's Kristen wig and who because it's not somebody i think i was familiar with it's Kristen wig in annie uh mumolo mumolo uh is but she like a writer or something yeah, they, I mean- did, they did bridesmaids together like okay, they are okay yeah okay, okay they're both from bridesmaids uh and worked on that together um jamie dornan by the way is hilarious in this movie and that's always I just, fun when an actor you just don't expect to yeah. You know. yeah there's so much of that here but yeah go ahead continue no, your thought today sorry today oh that's okay i just um i'm just you know over here working because i'm ready to move on no it's fine i like the idea of watching this i won't pay 20 bucks to do so because there's other outlets that i have for free stuff that makes me laugh like Worst cooks in America. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully it'll come your way at some point and you'll get to experience it and have a good time with it because I know that's I will, how it is for you is like when pop yeah. culture comes your way, that's when you yeah. have it in front of you. So, yeah, that's right. When it comes to my front door and knocks and says, do you want to avoid working for the next couple of hours and watch something <laughs> instead? I'll be like, yeah, that that is something I want to do. Then it'll say it'll say, OK. Come, come watch the shenanigans, and then I'll do it. I'm just and going I'm sure to say, like I'm just going to say, it has risen to the top of the next time we can do a Dicer Hughes movie night. I know what movie we're watching list. Uh, I, this, so honestly, this to me is one where I think it would be fun to do some sort of like watch along, and then immediately jump onto Twitch together and talk about it. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I think would be kind of fun to, yeah. to begin to yeah. explore doing. It doesn't strike me as like it's a straight up parody or anything, but no, the way you were describing your reaction to it just immediately took me back to watching Popstar. Sure. Which I actually watched two days in a row, which I'd never do that. Because uh, <laughs> immediately after great. I watched it, I was like, oh, honey, you got to watch this. And so, you mm-hmm. know, my wife and I watched it together. And Pop Star may be the last time I gave myself to a comedy oh like this. Oh, my God. I just, yeah. I, and, oh, God, Pop Star is amazing. I just, I wish, <laughs> I, I, if, and anytime I get to talk about that movie, because not enough people, I think it's definitely got more of an audience now. But, yeah. That movie is one of the like movie not doing well at the box office. That's one of the ones that's made me the most sad. Yeah, Jonathan, what uh, what do you got this week? You talk, um, talking about you know, pop star? It's weird because you're talking about that. I was going to talk about Golden Girls. No, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> um, I there's a new show on the Sci Fi Channel that I had been recording on my DVR, but I had not watched the first few weeks, and I caught up on it. Uh, here last week, and it is called Resident Alien. And I will say. Uh, up front and uh one of our friends uh who we've mentioned jeremy simser has worked on this show so if you think that makes me like that takes away my cred whatever i disagree because this show (laughs) is amazing um it is uh and i would find it amazing even if one of my friends wasn't working on it um it is so funny it is just so funny alan tudyk is it tudyk Mm -hmm. is that it sure is the great Alan Tudyk, who's, you know, from everything. Um, he, most post people probably know him from like Firefly or whatever, but um, he is the main person in this movie. He plays an alien who has come to Earth to... It's a TV show, right? It's a TV show, yes. Okay, you TV just show. You said movie. I, I'm sure it was so, just, Oh, um, sorry, safety. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's a TV show. It is uh, the fourth episode actually just aired last night. So it's it's pretty early on, but I'm confident to say because every episode is just, it's just um, like five minutes in, I was just so into its 
uh, its vibe or whatever it was giving off. But uh, Alan Tudyk plays an alien who comes to Earth to... I mean, you learn this pretty early on. He comes to Earth basically to figure out if how they can, how his has his race can invade it and take it over. And uh, but he but he crashes like he crashes his his spaceship and uh, there's some other issues. And so he ends up having to take over this person's uh, this this character in the in this small town in Colorado. And um, this guy that's living kind of on the outskirts of town, but through circumstances that happen, the the uh, the, the the small town's doctor uh, uh, dies, and the Alan Tudyk, the person he's taken over, is is a doctor. So they asked him to come in and help them try to figure out a who murdered the doctor and to actually become that town's doctor um, until they can find somebody else. Kind of has like a little like a Doc Hollywood feel to it almost. <laughs> Um, but it's definitely a comedy. It's a pretty dark comedy, but it's, I, I don't think you have to be like really be into dark comedies to get into it. I mean, I think you'll still find it really funny, but I will say like one of the plot lines, for instance, is one of the kids in the town, uh, can see him, can see like his alien form. Mm -hmm. And so there's like this kind of side story where Alan Tudyk is trying to figure out ways that he could possibly, uh, kill the kid and make it look like an accident. <laughs> Um, so it, but it, but it's, but it's, but I swear it's funny. It's in a funny way. <laughs> I swear guys, the child, the child murder no, planning is, is really, is funny really hilarious. The, kid, the, the actor playing the kid's great too. And he figures out what's going on. No, I hear you. I totally hear I, you. Yeah, I'm totally and, down for a dark yeah, comedy. And I, actually, I, actually toughens up a little bit and starts yeah. talking back to him and stuff. It's, it's great. It's really good no, stuff. I, I, I am at, I am as soon as we are done adding it to my watch <laughs> oh, list. Please and do. Yeah, please do. Yeah. I, I think I you'll really it. dig it. Um, and, and Tudyk is just so good. Like, I, yeah, I don't know that great. he's ever I, been, and I don't know that this, he's ever been better than this too. This might be my favorite thing of his, I mean, so far. Did you watch uh, uh, his, um, I forget what it was called, but it was basically him visiting uh, conventions and... No, no, I have not seen that. I heard about it. It, it was really funny. He's yeah, just so good. He's so funny. And I'm I'm really excited to watch the show. I'm glad that you uh, reminded yeah. me about it because I'm excited and to watch it. it. Yeah. And I, and I like it because, and then um, it's, and it's got a really good cast. I didn't know who most of the people were. Um, I will say his, um, is it, it's Sarah Tomko plays another character. She kind of plays like his, uh, the nurse that's in the town that's trying to help him out and stuff. Mm -hmm. Obviously these people don't know he's an alien, but uh, Sarah Tomko, people probably recognize her. She was on Sneaky Pete. And uh, she was on, she played Tiger Lily on uh, Once Upon a Time, uh, if anybody watched that show. But it's got a really nice cast, and it's just, it's just, it's got this, it's just got this charm to it, and this really, it's got my sense of humor. So nice. um, I'm just really digging it. So yeah, te definitely check that out. Resident Alien. It's on Sci Fi Channel right now. It's on uh, Thursday nights. And then I, I don't know if it's available like on Hulu or something. I don't know how Sci Fi works. Mm hmm. Or Peacock, maybe because it's NBC. I don't know, but it's yeah. it's out there. I'm sure. So there's probably some way to watch it. So I'll figure it out. Uh, the other show he was in was called Con Man and ran for yes. two seasons. Uh, in case you want to check that out, today what do yeah. you got? Um, I continue to be completely obsessed with Twitch, uh, as I find it to be very distracting. Which you love. Complement to my work day. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are some channels I I cannot go into if I need to work. But then there are some channels that I'm discovering are just so fun to have on in the background. And um, one of them uh, I've mentioned before, Brush for Hire. He's a great one to just sort of have on in the background and just kind of glance over um, because he's just going about his work day. Uh, I've also mentioned Moco Made, incredibly distracting. I cannot have them on. I they, They're constantly talking to the chat and I'm always wanting to be like a part of what's going on, which mm -hmm. is honestly makes them addictive and lovable. And I, I, I really enjoy them. But another one that I've discovered and I'm really loving as a background companion and just a fascination to sort of watch work is C not Bush. Uh, the letter Excuse C. Me? Say again. C not Bush. <laughs> um, give me a second. I'll explain more. Um, so it's a knotted Bush? The, the letters. No, his name is Christopher R. Not Bush. His last name is not Bush. Okay. Fair um, enough. Which is fascinating. I bet, um, I bet so, he got a Manscaped sponsorship really fast. So the letter C and then N-O-T-B-U-S-C-H. Uh, he has actually been streaming for 10 years. Wow. Nice. He is a Twitch partner. He has one of the largest consistent audiences that I've seen so far. And he is a sculptor. 
So he works with this really incredible clay that is, um, it's called, uh, what's it called? Cost clay. It's an, it's a very different kind of clay in that he can, it, it's very palpable and almost plastic in a way where he can like shake it around and it doesn't break off and it doesn't dry out quickly. So he has the most amazing sculptures. He's been working on this, his craft for a long, long time. And it's just incredible to watch him work. Um, and then he bakes it in his oven, like in his kitchen, he brings it back out and he paints it and he does, um, highly, in, highly customized work. He's working on a piece right now for blizzard, the world of Warcraft people, uh, which is like one of their, uh, dragon mounts for their death knights. This, that particular sculpt he works on on Mondays, for example. And I've been tuning in and kind of watching the progress of these incredible sculpts. Uh, the other day, I uh, like actually this Monday of this week, I tuned in and it was really weird. It was like he was painting it. Okay, the sculpture fell over in the oven and caught fire. Oh, oh wow. And part of the skull melted away in the oven no. and it's watching this artist do what the artists do, which is recover. And he is so not phased by it. He's nonplussed Aaron. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he is not, but continue. Is he plussed? <laughs> he's sure. He's, go for it. He's so calm and he's just like, oh, he's cleaning it off and the chat is freaking out. And he created a command for WTF. So everyone who came in that was new, one of the mods would just type in, you know, exclamation point WTF, and it would explain in a blurb what happened mm -hmm. as he just is cleaning it up and adding more clay to it and starts the fix process. So that is really, it's just, you're seeing the life of these people work, whether it's the, the artist, you know, painting a sculpture, uh, or a miniature, like with, um, a brush for hire. But in this case, he's actually building out these incredible pieces from clay from nothing. Uh, and since he's been doing it for a long time, it's, it's, he's just got this casual ease to him and he's great to have on the background. Cause it's just, he doesn't chat a lot. He's working and you're watching mm -hmm. him work. So you can just have him on and kind of glance over and see what he's up to and keep moving on with your day. Or if you want to obviously be highly interactive, you can jump into the chat. Uh, he's got a, a, a 10 year long community. So, um, and if you're interested in sculpting, he's good at answering questions. There's a lot of people in the chat who also ask, ask answer questions. And again, he's working with this brand new type of clay. So for example, Iris and I just the other day we had him on and we were working with Play-Doh while we were watching him create his craft. He's watching him, you know, she's watching uh, Christopher do his stuff and she's trying to like mold and craft these different shapes. And I, I told him what we were doing. And he was like, if you're, if you're already starting her on Play-Doh and she's four, she's probably ready for polymer clay because it's thicker and mm -hmm. she'll get used to actually having to push her hands into these sections. And as I told you guys last week, we're ordering polymer clay to create our own um, a toy because she's watching that show that I told you guys about. Uh, part of the inspiration is because we're watching the C Not Bush Twitch. So I highly recommend it. Um, if at the very least, just go and look, his website is cnotbush.com. That's C-N-O-T-B-U-S-C-H.com. You can actually see all of the sculpts he does. Uh, he has a dog cam that he cuts over to. And when he does, if you guys tune in for any amount of time, you'll see it. When you cut over to that, all of the stuff in the background of his dog cam is all sculpted by him. All of the books and the plates and the cups and the various things that you see. Uh, it has a very much a hobbit hole vibe to it in mm -hmm. a way. Um, he plays really relaxing music in the background. So it's just him at his work craft table. And he does a giveaway every single month, whether you're part of the Twitch community or not. You can always join in for that too. So a really, really awesome. Uh, can't recommend this one high enough. That's um, neat. Safe for the whole family. Super chill guy. Very talented. And it's really Not awesome much. that you have a daughter that actually wants to do stuff with you. It must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> she's only four. I don't, we'll I don't know. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Get back uh, to me when we'll she's see nine. What <laughs> I, I have spent the entire time you were talking, uh, completely listening to you, but also mm -hmm. scrolling through uh, Christopher's Twitter feed. And oh my goodness, how talented is this guy? I like, know. 
Like well, I'm seeing so it. much stuff I love. He's got he's got <sighs> a sculpture here of Puck Marin from Flight of the Navigator. Do you remember the Puck Marin creature? Uh, which yes. is a little creature that grabs on with like one reverse leg. Yes. And yeah. and it is so cool. And I, I know. want it and I can't have it. No, and- <laughs> he, he also, um, just the other night, he popped on in the evening and he was playing a video game, kind of like, uh, there's like one where it's like this little nightmare world. And so mm-hmm. it's kind of like a little bit of a scary one um, of some kind of a person running through dreams, like a kid. Oh, oh, it's it's he he it's little nightmares is the name of the video game. Um, and then he'll sculpt things from the like from pop culture that he really enjoys. And then mm-hmm. he also will just sit down and start sculpting. Like the giveaway from last month is uh someone getting punched in the face. Yeah, I saw that one too, yeah. I watched him sculpt that and he didn't know what he was gonna create when he started. And wow. so anyway, it's it's a really fascinating and very inc- cool, incredibly talented person. Um, Christopher Notbush. I highly recommend. That's going to wrap it up for Behind the Sins this week. Uh, don't forget to make sure you're subscribed and go ahead and leave a comment or rating as well. Uh, if you've got anything you want to send us, you can mail it to us, P.O. Box 881, Republic, Missouri, 65738. You can hang out with us on Twitter. I'm at Aaron Dicer. She is at Denae Says. D-E-N-E-E-S-A-Y-S. And he is at Sam Loomis 13. So for Jonathan Watkins, Danae Hughes, Resid Nora, and myself, we will see you next week. Happy National Chili Day! <laughs> mm, chili. Thanks for listening. Send any feedback to bts at cinemasins.com. And be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment. Find more ways to connect by visiting cinemasins.com slash bts. Okay, let's see if I can get to the recording on time. Whoa, excuse me, my goodness. <laughs> it's t- so rude. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. I need to put you on to my herd ferns. Ear ferns. I said head ferns. My my herd ferns. You definitely are wearing head ferns. I'm wearing ear ferns. You're wearing ear ferns. I'm wearing head ferns. Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Jonathan, you have shoulders and arms. Yes. I have, hope you realize that. You're a, you're <laughs> we didn't know. We, we man, didn't know. Man, it's been... It's been, it's it's been, been so- like it's over so a long. year. No, it's yeah, been I, it's been yeah. under a year. It's Due been a to year. The pandemic, I had to cut off my arms. Oh shit. I mean, it could have been as far as we knew. Like all we knew is that you had a forehead for the last year. I used a new razor to shave this morning. I have entered adulthood at the ripe old age of 45 and am replacing my razor blades for the first time in my life. Because so, you don't grow that much facial hair, right? I just don't grow that much facial hair. But I but I realized as blades get older, they don't do as good of a job. No. And and they they're a little How more do you prickly. Not know this? Well, and also people would be Wait, you're not kid you're not you're joke you're not joking. You haven't replaced your razor blade in like thirty years. I've bought new ones, but I've never like Yikes. used like the like, hey, Yikes. replace your razor blade every you know, three oh. weeks, like, oh, okay. you know, gotcha. where you swap out the actual blade. I'm I'm fast forwarding in my mind to next week when we do the premiere on YouTube again and everyone's listening to the outtakes and they're like going, Aaron, what the hell? <laughs> I know, right? Well, and here's the other thing. I, I may have already mentioned this too. I've never year, used a drop of shaving cream in my entire life. I've shaved dry yeah, my I, entire life. Yeah, that, that just... Ah, uh, yes. No. The phrase shave dry, my favorite. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh my God. I just need you to stop telling me what you don't use because it just flips me out. <laughs> you don't use soap. Nope. You're so gross. No, here's what I use. Toothbrush, You're like tooth- Matthew McConaughey. You must just smell like... Beautiful. I don't know. No, I doubt it. I mean, I'm sure your wife is used to it, so that's good for her, but... <laughs> hey, Danae, we, we used to hang out. Do I stink? Yeah, sometimes. How often? I have I can only think of once. <laughs> I have uh, I have BO if I don't use deodorant. So I use deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrush. 
think that's it. I just need you to stop talking. That's the entirety of my uh, hygienic care routine. I don't, I don't need to know anymore. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That, this has been my TED Talk. Thank you. <laughs> oh, hey, I did good for his birthday present. Oh, you remembered a birthday? When was his yeah. birthday? Yesterday. What would you do? I got so I guess there's this new baseball player that the Cardinals. Yeah, got. Nolan, That's Nolan a big Arenado. Deal. Yeah, and so he tweeted out that he wanted this shirt and said, "Who's buying this for me?" So I did. Um, that was a that was an easy win. He tweeted that he liked a shirt. I bought the shirt. <laughs> but I wanted yeah, to do Yeah, some... but you got to be paying attention today, and let's be honest. <laughs> that I... is that is a step. Well, and it's it's scary. So so then I thought, oh, I want to do something collectible. Cause it's a big birthday. And, and mm-hmm. so I went to the only place I know to go, which is MLB and they have this whole collectible section Yeah, and then they have signed <clears throat> things and there was a signed baseball and baseball signatures are really not legible. <laughs> so, I don't think anybody's anybody who's famous who has to sign their name a lot. I think I, and there are some that do a very, very good job. Cause I was looking and there were some of them that I could clearly tell who this, I don't know who this person is, but I can right, read their right. signature from across the room. Wonderful. Well done. Um, but this uh, not owned guy, he has a signature that I think I described it to my husband. It looked like he attached a ballpoint pen to a fly and then released it into the room and held the, the ball into the air and the fly just flew by. And that's <laughs> what happened on the, that's what it reminded me of. Nice. But there was a ball signed by this guy that Justin's excited about. And it also had Sharknado written on it, which I guess is kind of a nickname because his last name has NATO in it. Mm-hmm. And, oh, he, you can, and you can legibly read Sharknado. And I thought, okay, first of all, is this a cool nickname or is this lame? I don't know. So I, I did do one research. I spent like five minutes. I found an article where it was referenced that it was his nickname. And I thought, okay, okay, okay. And then I spent $200 on a baseball. <laughs> nice. I gave your husband shit, by the way, uh, one oh, of those did? mornings. It was, I think it was the day or two after they signed Nolan Arenado. And uh, uh, he did one of those, it's a good day to love yourself or whatever tweets uh-huh. that he does every day. And, I don't uh, think that's exactly said, how he puts it. But <laughs> I don't, It's a good day to love. Uh, it's a good day to be nice and be happy and love life or something. It's a good day to something. give yourself pleasure. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think that's where he's going <laughs> with those exactly tweets. That's exactly what he says. I, I quoted it ver- <laughs> word for word. Um but uh, I said, that's easy to say when your team just signed, you know, one of the best players in baseball. And then yeah. he just sent back 100%. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Okay. So we tested Premier oh, yeah. for the first time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so I'm in the chat. And uh, there are about 30 minutes beforehand, a couple people start talking. So we're, I'm in there and we're, we're just chatting. It's really casual. Like maybe 10 comments, maybe. And yeah. five of them are mine. So let's just be like, it was mostly just me responding to people. And the show starts and it starts to kick up. And there's a few more people that come in. And I was really like, okay, cool. This is going to be exciting. We get through the intro and it's like, all right, let's go to the first one. Commercial sins. The chat dies. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow. Okay. So should I say something? You know, mm-hmm. like, hey, anybody there? <laughs> or what do I say? So I don't remember what I said. I, I just kind of posted something. And nothing, like nobody, I, I thought, oh, maybe this is the part of the show where everyone just goes mm-hmm. about their life and they're not wanting to chat. And I assume it, you're not, you don't have to chat. Like you don't, you can come and listen to the show with everybody and not be in the chat. That's fine. And then I realized that YouTube has two settings for the chat, top comment and live chat. So I click over to live chat and I missed so much, like five and a half to eight minutes had gone by and i just thought that nobody was there or interested but actually they were all in there talking and it was just i went so oh. <laughs> so that's so funny you you just told my own story uh because i had the exact same experience because i signed in as tv sins uh yeah. on the tv sins account and so i get in there and i see some chat and i'm like oh hey this looks interesting silence it's like oh yeah. i thought maybe people would you know, be like, hey, yeah. TV Sins well, is TV here. Sins is who's, here. <laughs> who's that? Nope, nothing. So then, like, five minutes later, I type something, like, you know, about the show that's going on with the show. Uh, and it was like, well, maybe I just, you know, I'll try to prime the pump here a little bit and see if we can get people talking. 
nothing. And I'm just like, okay, so that's how this goes. It says, you know, 25 <laughs> people are, are watching slash listening, but nobody wants to chat with me. All right. I'll leave. I literally didn't come back for an hour and because, like, I would check in on it every once in a while. Yeah. Like, nobody's chatted. Nobody's chatted. And then I went to dis- – It's a little like, – were you so disheartened and discouraged? I, I was a little bit. I was a little bit disheartened. I was like, well, I thought maybe people would want to say hey at least, you know. I was nervous and, too. I was nervous no one was going to show. And uh, and so then I was checking on Discord and somebody on Discord was like, we're having so much fun over there. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> a liar. <laughs> liar what are you talking about you want to know something funny i just i feel i'm proud of myself i just pulled a Danae, and while you guys were talking i uh renewed my library books so i didn't have Good to go so i didn't have to go to the library today it's the way to be man i listened to everything you guys were saying i just i i didn't wasn't mm-hmm. part of it yesterday so i didn't have anything exactly. to comment on yeah you kind of know when it's you you feel the flow yeah. of the show jonathan jonathan, jonathan don't you, encourage you, her jonathan, no no no, no. jonathan is learning a very important part of performative <laughs> show creation where you know that you don't have something to say so you just kind of back out and you listen and then completely you come disconnect in later. so I'm that also, you don't hear something that might be interesting to you and you might have something to say about i also hope that somebody asks me what a library is when <laughs> <laughs> hey danae do you want to tell the story about that one time we had the staff meeting with a bunch of people uh from the company we work with and you set up a, a puppy cam and your dog oh decided to just straddle the puppy cam the entire time and show uh, his genitalia <laughs> Wait, to the entire happened? group this was for what <laughs> do you want to tell that story today oh my god this was with made in we are planning you know sin week and so yeah. we had this meeting with them to tell them about it all and it was um the the head for like all the background stuff for youtube the uh like her, the manager, our editing manager, and then like one of their major support teams. And so we were testing StreamYard with them and showing them like what it's going to look like and everything mm-hmm. like this. And we needed to have, we wanted to, we wanted to take screenshots <laughs> so that they could create, um, yeah. like the background. So see how like our background has the behind the scenes. How am I just right hearing about up? this? <laughs> so, so we, so they're like, well, we'll take screenshots. Oh, we need to have another person. There's only five of us. So I was like, oh, well, I'll just log on. And I did with my phone. And then I set it on the floor Ah. so that they could see the puppies. And fucking Reese's just kept straddling (laughs) the phone. And it was just dog dick. Like nothing but dog dick on the screen. It was so... And I'm like super sorry about that it's like, this is really awkward <laughs> oh yeah yeah so we have his chihuahua uh she's and she's fine um, i believe it's pronounced chihuahua yeah i think it's chihuahua. so one of my D D players created a character uh in their backstory whose name is hold on i wrote it down it's l h apostrophe k Blech. and and the the this character is like a lion person from they're called like the Leonin people or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so you're supposed to like pronounce some of it with like, and so his name is, Oh, Oh, (laughs) (laughs) what the hell was that? I I started laughing and I couldn't do it. It's like, Oh, Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Wow, that's just that's mean it's like you can't do i'm that. like dude why what are you doing to me so you want me to just from time to time like remind you that hulk called <laughs> it's like, and then the party was walking to the mountain and hulk went over <laughs> to grab his sword and here's I, I, the thing about hulk's sword <laughs> is like that, that it's pretty impressive <laughs>